Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the judgment day. It makes me sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Make me a fisher of men, keep me fishing. Make me a fisher of men, I pray. Make me a fisher of men, keep me fishing. Keep me fishing till the judgment day. It makes me sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Give me grace to endure, to endure. Oh, give me grace to endure, I pray. Give me grace to endure, to endure. To endure until the judgment day. It makes me sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Keep me seeking you, Yahweh, keep me seeking. Keep me seeking you, Yahweh, I pray. Keep me seeking you, Yahweh, keep me seeking. Keep me seeking till the judgment day. It makes me sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. These things are written unto you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the atonement for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now it's by this that we know, that we know him. If we keep his commandment, he that says, I know him, yet keeps not his commandment, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly, the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. He who abides in Jesus ought himself to walk just as Jesus walked. The Bible says, love not the world, Neither the things that are in the world. Anyone who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of is not of the Father, but is of this world. The Bible says, He who practices righteousness is righteous, even as He, Jesus, is righteous. He who of the devil. For 
as scarlet, they shall be white as snow, though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The Bible says, repent therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out so that the time of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says yeah. to submit yourself. You can leave this area to like go hand out tracks or I was thinking about like going that way towards the students and stuff and just like trying to talk to people one on one. And he won't do that, yeah. I might wait a little bit. It's like while. preaching yeah, and stuff like be over here. Exactly. of God's goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your hardness and your unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance and doing good seek for glory honor and immortality but to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish on every on To the Jew first and also to the Greek. <laughs> Jesus Christ 
called two different people during his earthly ministry to go and sin no more. Now if Jesus said this to two different people, or even just one, and we know that Jesus never lies, Jesus never sinned a single time, and you're going to face him, sinner, so how could you rightly say that when Jesus commanded two people to go and sin no more, that he was just playing around? You want the picture? Yeah, sure. Some Make sure you share it on all social media platforms. Every time you share that picture, you're sharing the gospel, so we appreciate that. Thank you. This woman out, the Pharisees. They had her. What is the Bible? The Bible never you know, in the area of general congregation. Like Jesus said, be ye perfect. And they had stones in their hand, and they were about to stone this woman to death because they said, as he said to Jesus, morally clean, separated unto God. Our law says that this woman who was caught in the very act of adultery should be stoned to death. And Paul. If they turned, they asked Jesus, they said, now what do you say? See, they were trying to catch him. They were trying to catch him, saying something unjust that they could condemn him for. Now Jesus, he knelt down onto the ground, and he wrote something in the sand. We're not sure what he actually wrote. But when he rose up, he said to them, whichever one of you has no sin, they cast the first stone at her. Now, one by one, these Pharisees, they began to shut the stones down and walk away one by one. You see, these Pharisees knew that if they were to stone this woman to death because they had said that they would be hypocrites. Mind change, turning away from sin, direction change away from sin. Then the woman and Jesus were left standing all alone. The Bible says, and Jesus said to this woman, be there, no one left to condemn you. And this woman said to Jesus, there is no one, Lord. Notice that she called him, Lord. And Jesus said to her, I do not condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Let the worst thing come upon you. Now, as I, I, as I posed the question to you before, what worst thing could come upon a woman who was literally about to be stoned to death in her sin? Her body was about to be destroyed. What worst thing could come upon somebody who was about to die in their sin? Well, the thing that is coming, eternal hellfire, Jesus said, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. Or it would be better 
that you were to enter in the so that, line, that mindset of we're all sinners, less one of your members, all of Egypt, all of the world, all then for you to the enter into hellfire, and to hell fire, cross your hands. Jesus said, if your right eye causes you to sin, look it out and cast it from you. For it would be better for you to enter the life only having one of your eyes than to enter into hell fire with both your eyes. Jesus said, enter in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leads to destruction. But enter by the narrow gate, for narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads unto life. Narrow is the gate that leads unto life. <coughs> Wide is the gate which leads to destruction. And there are many, there are many there are many that go in by it go in by the wide gate the narrow way is jesus christ the bible says that jesus christ is the way the truth and the life and that no one comes to the father but by Jesus Christ. The Bible says, to whom you submit yourself, slave or servant, to obey, you are that one slave or servant to whom you obey, whether all men leading to death, whether of sin leading to death, whether of sin leading to death, whether of I said, yeah, if something happens, I have something to back me up. And she understand. I had to explain to the late young lady. Uh -huh. Good. Yes. But hey, look, the second round is going to yeah. happen. Oh, 
together in your mother's womb. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Like a little defiled child. Jesus Christ. Not doing it all. You do not come from amoeba, single-celled organism, through a wicked teaching that is highly deluded, called macroevolution. You are lies from your father, the devil. You should know it by now because you're your father. And you sinners who follow your father are one of the same. Your mama gay. We are out here today because the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23, all have sinned. Past tense. Not that we all continue in sin every single day. You'll never find this in the Bible. Now I know the times I came down south, that many of these Christian denominations teach contrary to biblical doctrine. The Apostle Paul warned about this in 2 Timothy chapter 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up to themselves teachers, having turned their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. We are in that time. The Apostle Paul knew this time would come. But the Bible says if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. <laughs> Jesus preached many difficult and hard words. Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 13, Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the path that leads to destruction. There are many who go in by it, but narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life. There are few who find it. That's Jesus' own words. Does that sound like accept Jesus in your heart? Confess him as your personal Lord and Savior? Does that sound like we all sin every day? The blood of Jesus covers you no matter what? That's not what Jesus preached. He said the way is narrow, difficult to find. You find this path because they simply love their sin. That's why Jesus said, if your eye costs you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It would be more profitable for you to enter in the light only having one eye than having both your eyes and to be thrown into the everlasting fire where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If your hand or your foot costs you to sin, cut them off cast them from you. It would be more profitable for you to enter in the life only have a one hand or one foot than to be thrown into the everlasting fire where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Now Jesus was not endorsing mutilation because you could pluck out the eye and still have one eye to sin to commit the sin of lust. Because Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28, you heard it said of old, thou shall not commit adultery, Ten Commandments. But I say, whoever looks upon a woman to lust her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. See, the Lord is looking at the heart. He sees the sin in your heart. I see LGBTs out here. Yeah. 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 I heard a lot of um, um, Catholic. The Catholic was talking about. She's like, um, you got your hate speech. I say, no, we love you. Love is once someone to go to hell. And I said, Mary cannot save you. If you pay to a statue to idolatry, and then she took a gospel train. The other one, she said, you can't judge. I say, ju judge righteousness. 
On the evil so good. I was patient to listen to them, and they I were know patient. I know we look like court hey, soldiers out here. It looks like I think you, I think you should go next, bro. Let's, yes. Let's, I thought Jesus said the two greatest commandments are to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. You know if the back of this building was on fire and you don't know about it, and I come to the front side to warn you, that is showing love for you. If I don't warn you, I hate you. I hate you too, sir. I appreciate it. No, I didn't say I hate you. Did you, do you have the ears to hear? 10 to 5, right? Let's see if you have the ears to hear. Uh, yeah, I should say on there 10 to 5 or 11 to 4. I can't remember what it says. You probably won't hear this in many churches. Oh, yeah, 11 to 4. Jesus said that the Son of Man is going to send out his angel to gather out of his kingdom. Yeah, that's fine, no problem. He's just going to look over. Yeah, sure, that's okay. So he'll have to do all of this. Sometimes the zones get confusing. There's a map inside. The yeah. That's the only thing that usually Don't do it right here in front of this little thing right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah so as far as I know, unless yeah. it's changed, it no. could have changed. Notice I'm giving you Bible. So, because but my opinion is nothing. The word of God means something. So the Bible Appreciate you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. Hearing, and Jesus made it clear in John chapter 3, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. You must be born of water in the spirit. Hey, bro. Many Catholics try to take that baptism. Well, I was baptized. I'm born again. That water did absolutely nothing for you without the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, we didn't come to listen to what you have to say. But if you want to engage with us in conversation, repent. No, 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 that's not what it says. If you want to come and have a private conversation, we're absolutely talking. And you shall receive the blood of Jesus Christ. It doesn't you don't want to be on YouTube, I won't put you on. It says, I mean, if you want to have a conversation, you can talk. And be baptized. Well, well, but he, what he's doing right now is open air preaching. So he's not, he's not here to listen to you right now. See, the Bible says in Mark 16 to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We are feeling, fulfilling the Great Commission, keeping the commandments of Jesus. Because Jesus said in John 14, 23, He that has my commandments and keeps them, it is He that loves me. And He who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will come to Him and manifest myself to Him. Now, wait a minute. Let's deal with something here. Because many professing Christians He will manifest himself to you by keeping his commandments. And what is the first commandment? Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. You will perish in your sins. Jesus said, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. John chapter 8. And he goes on and says, whoever commit sin is a slave to sin and a slave will not abide in the house forever but a son abides forever therefore if the son jesus sets you free you shall be free indeed so what is he setting you free from the committing of sin that's why the apostle paul said in colossians 1 talking to christians he says, you have been delivered from darkness and conveyed into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, you have no remission of sin. You must repent of your sin. Now, many churches, particularly down south, will tell you, 
that repentance does not mean turning from your sin. Well, let's see if that's correct. Matthew chapter 12, verse 41, Jesus said that the men of Nineveh are going to rise up in the judgment and condemn this generation because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. So here's Jesus defining the repentance that is acceptable in his sight. So go to Jonah chapter 3 in the Old Testament. God sent his prophet Jonah to that wicked city to declare judgment that he was going to destroy the city in 40 days. The men of Nineveh declared a fast, not just from food and water, but from their sin. Verse 10, verse 10 says that God saw their work and changed his mind not to destroy that city. So here's Jesus showing that repentance, the repentance that he is commanding is to give up your sin. In other words, Jesus said it like this. He told the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. John 5, 14, Jesus said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. He spoke that to a man that had been lame for 38 years. What could be greater than being lame for 38 years? Hellfire for all of eternity. See, the Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is not changed because Jesus died on the cross. The wages of sin is still death. Revelation 21.8 says the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderer, sexually immoral, idolaters, sorcerers, and all liars will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Many of the sins on this sign here I used to be guilty of. I wasn't a homosexual, but I did sodomite things with women. I was. Why is that funny? It's disgusting. I mean, it's like really nice. It's wicked. But I used to commit most of those things. 16, 17 years ago, I was like many of you. I thought Jesus was a complete joke. I didn't believe in Jesus. Now I'm not saying I was an atheist. I wasn't a fool. Are you a racist? You must be a racist in the Bible. But I didn't believe in Jesus. 16, 17 years ago, the Lord Jesus spoke to me out of the blue and told me to pick up the Bible and come follow me. And that's what I did. I started reading the New Testament. I started reading the New Testament. And before long, I could see what many of these churches are preaching. It's lies. It's deception. That everybody sins every day. That we're going to sin till the day we die. As long as you're in this flesh, you can't help it. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 6, Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Amen. Listen up, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that the whom you present yourself slave to obey? You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked. Listen up. 
that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obey from that heart that doctrine to which you were delivered, and Nixon having been set free from sin. Notice that he's, he's speaking to the Christians at home, and he says you were delivered from sin. Having been delivered from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. See? Christians don't sin every day. I mean, in James chapter 1, it says, Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Notice you, you when you're when you're enduring temptation, it doesn't say, I'm giving in to temptation. You receive the crown of life when you endure, not give in to temptation. When you have been approved, you receive the crown of life. Now I know down south, the same in Ohio, I'm from Ohio. They bring that. It's literally not your campus. Now many down south teach that you are saved by faith alone. Yet the Bible does not say that. James chapter 2, the Lord has come and said, My brethren, if someone says he has faith and does not have words, can his faith save him? So he's literally asking you, can faith alone save you? It's a rhetorical question. You sound like the biggest loser ever. I probably am the youth center, but I'm here because I love you and I want you to be saved. I don't want you to Sorry, did you have a question? Oh, I I'm not sure what it takes to like get a permit on campus to like do this. Like, uh, you have to talk to. Um, pull my phone back up for a second here. Are you, what, what are you, why do you want to get one? Shut the fuck up! I'm just gonna bring my ministry on campus to do this. You gotta talk to student activities. Huh? Student activities. Student activities? Yeah, you gotta talk to us. Right, you. You're welcome. You got a gospel track, right? Okay, you got one. Yeah. There's another one too. You can read for yourself. Yeah. Have a good day.
Huh? So whenever you're ready, you preach. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just let you guys get a chance. I preach all the time, so I don't mind saying. <laughs> yeah, I preach all the time too. <laughs> yeah, a lot more than I do. I can go back to preach after a while. So guys, you guys think it is hot? Guess what? Hell is a real place. The preach at all, bro? Yeah, I'm gonna go after him. You wanna go after him? Sure. Okay. I, I was hoping to go after you, to be honest. Okay. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Because you, you always set good standards, man. So then, like, when I follow behind, I kind of got an idea where to go with it. Okay. Well, I mean, if you want me to go next, I can go next. I don't nah, care. I'll go next. Okay. But from an internal perspective, if that's true, let's go. You said you did, so you're a liar. Thank you for the encouragement. Appreciate that. Can you hold still real quick? For the side course here? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can you move it a little bit more on this way? Nah, I'm not really interested in that. Conversation last time. It's decent, yeah. Still feel the same? I thought about my feelings. I still believe the truth. I haven't changed that, that's for sure. It's telling the guy over there, but everyone has their own different version of truth. How is your truth better than my truth? Well, I don't have my truth. All I have is the truth. Okay, you have God's truth. How is God's truth better than my truth? If I don't believe in God, how is God's truth better than mine? Okay, so the only way you can know anything is true for sure is if you have all knowledge. And you don't have all knowledge. Who's with you? But God does. Says God. Well, that's what God is. God has all knowing. He's on mission. God says that He knows everything. Why should I listen to someone who already tells me He knows everything? Well, you don't really have like a narcissist to me. You don't really have any other choice. It seems like a how, really how big else, narcissist. How else could He know anything for sure? 
How else could you know anything for sure? Unless there's a God who tells you what this for sure. God didn't tell me shit that I know. I learned that shit. I mean, because of, like I said, because of people like you guys, I'm not a Christian. You tried that last time. That doesn't work, man. What He's, do you mean I tried it last time? Nigga, it's the truth. When you stand before a guy, you won't be able to use that excuse, Senator. What? When you stand before a guy, you won't be able to use that excuse, Senator. You have no excuse I'm not going to stand before God. Fuck God. Okay. Why do you hate yourself? Why do you hate yourself? Sure do. How's it going? Pretty good. Nah, uh, man, I'm fast. I don't want to make you feel comfortable in your sins. Comfortable in my sins? Nah, man, I'm with y'all. Hell awaits. You're not with me. You're an atheist, man. You're gonna, now you gotta lie to me? I'm agnostic. Well, whatever. I mean, you're not with me. It's the same thing? It's close enough. I mean, you act like an atheist. Unless you changed the last time I came here, you act like an atheist. But you claim to be agnostic, philosophic, because you know what? Atheism is yeah, not yeah. tenable for philosophically. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't <laughs> believe something doesn't exist. It's not. Well, you could if God revealed it to you. So where to next? Well, it's Georgia State yesterday. So Georgia State yesterday, uh, do y'all do like tours? Well, I preach every college campus semester. I mean, that's... In Georgia? Um, well, I preach... Well, I preach all over the place. I'm going to the Northeast in a couple weeks. Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont area. Oh, yeah, okay. How do they receive you up there? It's better. Really? Because I figured they were a lot more liberal. Players. They are. That's why it's better. There's not a bunch of hypocrite Christians saying they're Christians when they're not. Well, these are probably... A lot of these people are probably conservative Christians. Do you agree? No. Really? No. There's most people in the South who call themselves Christians they aren't really Christians. They're living in wickedness. They're living holy lives. That, that's, that's where we get the most problems from. That and Sodomites. The ones we get the most problems from. And so up, up in the Northeast, where I'm, I'm from the Northeast originally, when I preach up there, I don't have any hypocrite Christians coming at me and telling me I'm wrong. They're just a bunch of unbelievers who want to debate, and usually they're a lot more calm than the unbelieving, the su supposed Christians. So it's actually refreshing to me. What percentage of this crowd do you think is Christian? Actual Christian? Or, or, or like identify as Christian? Um, probably a very small percentage. Oh, identify. So probably in this crowd, probably 33%. 33%? Yeah, one third. Really? So you think the majority is like agnostic atheists? Um, well, that's not the only other category. I've seen some Muslims here. Yeah, there I've are a couple. Of them. I mean, it's got to be like less than 10%. Roman Catholics, LGBT. I don't know what they believe. If they believe in some kind of God or not, LGBT, but they're obviously not Christians. But I don't know if they identify as atheists or agnostic or what. I have, they don't really go to that route. They just want to talk about their sexual perversion the whole time. So they don't want to talk about religion usually. So, so wait, so I've never, I've never met, I've, I've never met someone on this campus who's a, who's an LGBT person who claims to be Muslim, or Hindu, or Buddhist. They usually don't go down that route. They usually yeah. want to talk about their sexual. Well, those religions are generally a lot more conservative, right? Because we have like immigrants who are you know, come from very conservative backgrounds, whereas Christianity here in the United States has been here for so long that it's like become liberalized. Well, I don't know of one religion that supports LGBT anyway. Well, no, I, I would agree. So that's right. It's, it's, not, it's not really a matter of them being conservative; it's a matter of their religion, what they were taught, and what they believe. So, I mean, Muslim countries, they get thrown off a high tower to their death. They get buried up to their waist to death in the city center. That's what they do with the LGBT in Muslim countries. Oh, I know. Yeah. So. No, yeah. It's the, it's the only country where Muslims are, I think, that they can get away with something like that. So, so do you think the United States should be like a theocracy? Like, do you think the Ten Commandments should be like in a law? No, I don't think it should be a theocracy. I'm not involved in politics at all. I'm, I, I have no, I have no care in my, my mind about politics. 
This is this, this America is a constitutional republic. That's what it's supposed to be. I, I'm not trying. I would never try to make it into a theocracy. I would never try to, try to make it to a Christian nation. There never has been, never will be a Christian nation. So, so you would never want like, wait, there never has been. No, never has been. You wouldn't consider like the papal states. The Korea is like a Christian nation. Well, Roman Catholicism is not Christian. It's pseudo Christian. So I don't consider it a Christian now. Okay, okay. I mean they were killing Christians. They were killing so genuine. Like your Christians. specific idea of Christianity. No, what Christianity what is. That's what it is. It's not Roman Catholicism. That's a that's a deforming of Christianity. But well, wouldn't you agree that they would say that they are Christian? So for example, when Constantine was emperor and Ford, the Roman Empire where the Roman Catholics are ruling. There were, I mean, obviously they, they may have implied some biblical principles throughout their rulership, but it wasn't a Christian nation. Okay, they would they would actually persecute unbelievers. That's not that's not Christ-like. Christ says, "Love your neighbor, love your enemy, pray for them." That's what he tells us to do. That's why there can't be a Christian nation. The the, the doctrines of the new, new covenant, the New Testament, are not the same as the Old Testament because the Old Testament was for the Israelites, meant to be a theocracy. Mm -hmm. That's the only nation in the history of the world that's been a legitimate theocracy is the Israelite nation. And even they failed. I mean, they weren't doing things right. They were full of idolatry, full of wickedness, and God to judge them and kick them out of the nation. You wouldn't consider the Muslim empires, like the, the Umayyads or anything, as a theocracy? Yeah, I guess they'd be a theocracy according to the religion. But according to the Bible is what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, so Jewish, the Jewish, the Israelite nation, during times of David and Solomon, etc., very short period of time, it was a success, successful theocracy because the Israelites were actually obeying God. It was so. If we were to have a theocracy on Earth, it'd have to be like that. Okay. But, so, but a new covenant theology, we don't adhere to those things. I don't. My kids pick up stones, uh, pick up uh, sticks on the Sabbath. I don't stone them to death. <laughs> I mean, I don't do those things. Yeah, yeah. So, your version of Christianity, do you think it would be a good thing? If there was a theocracy that was on your version of Christianity, or, or the correct version, or whatever you want to call it. If we're talking about the old covenant Israelite nation, if there was a such nation on the face of the planet, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, like be opposed to it or protest against it or something like that because the but, law. Would you think it's a good thing? Like, would you advocate for? That I would not. I don't advocate for stuff like that. Well, no, I'm, I'm not saying like to turn the United States into it, but like some. No, I don't advocate for it at all. But I'm saying at the same time, I wouldn't come against it. Understand? Because if, if, if they believe they're they're the Israelites and they're his nation and they want to do things according to his law that gave him the Old Testament, I don't have any bones about that. Even Jesus, when the woman was thrown at his feet in adultery, he didn't say you can't stone her. He said he without sin can't stone her stone. So he has nothing against his own father's law. And neither do I. But at the same time, that's not New Covenant theology. So Christianity is not spread through through politics or through government oversight. Christianity is spread through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it. We don't go around putting guns in people's heads and say, convert or die. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Well, and I'm not saying that, like, I'm saying, like, a theocracy that, that believed that, like, they wouldn't, like, mandate things on the people. Well, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at. No, that's my theology. This man did. I'm not if you're an idolater, you're in trouble. I'm talking about the Christianity that you subscribe to. There's no such thing as a, as a Christian theocracy. It doesn't exist. It couldn't exist. You, God, Jesus, Jesus Christ never said it. He said, my kingdom is coming. My kingdom is in you. My kingdom is coming. He didn't say my kingdom is right now on earth. Now, when he comes, then we'll have a Christian theocracy. He will rule on earth for a thousand years. Yeah. And everybody will see what it's like to be ruled by Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, so, okay, so if Jesus said that we need to spread the word of Christianity to everybody, uh, don't you think a pillar society that subscribed to those Christian values, or that was under that those Christian values that you subscribe to, would be a good thing to show the world how a society could act prior to the coming. Of what do you Jesus? mean a pillar of society? Like um, a society that worked very well, that had a lot of stability, that had a lot of uh, wealth, and good things for people. I, mean, I, I think I think America, at certain points in its, in its history, has been that. It promotes freedom of religion, and freedom of speech. So those are good pillars to build upon because it lets people uh, convert others through word. So you believe Christianity? You believe Christianity is a pillar of freedom of religion? That anybody should be able to follow whatever they want to follow? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what God. God gives us free will. So we have choices to make. Now, obviously, we don't get to determine the consequences for our choices. God determines that. But God wants you to make your choices. He doesn't force anyone to be a Christian. 
your choice. It's your choice whether you want to be a Christian or not. Of course, in the end, you don't get to choose your consequences. But God gives you the truth through his preachers. You choose what to do with that truth. So you would disagree then that a Christian nation would not force. show people, well, maybe not, not force, but like show people around the world that things would be better if they were Christian or whatever? Well, I think the Bible teaches that, that if, if there's... If, if the Bible teaches that, then why if, don't you... If, well, you, you let me finish. If Christianity is, is ruling in people's hearts, okay, there will be no need for jails, no need for locks on your doors, on your car, in your house. There will be no thieves. There will be no broken relationship. There's no liars, no cheaters, no would adulterers. There be bars? No, there wouldn't be bars and clubs. In fact, if you study, like, so dance on if you study the, well, that's not that, it's not that you can't. It's that society changes naturally because people so are. So I wouldn't want to. I don't want to. I used to go to bars and clubs all the time. I don't want to anymore. And if you study the, uh, America's history, they had something called the Great Awakening. Mm -hmm. The first Great Awakening and the second Great Awakening. The first one was led by George Whitfield and um, a Calvinist preacher up in, in, in Massachusetts. And then also, and then, yeah, and went all up the East Coast. And then, of course, Charles Finney was involved in the second one. And when those things went far and wide, the whole towns were changed. Not by force or by law, but because those people's hearts were changed. So bar owners would shut down their own bars. There'd be no bars to go to. But do think other things like that have happened in other religions? Like, in Islam, like the, the spread of Islam throughout uh, the Middle East, with it starting in Mecca and going around. Do you think it's the same thing? Uh, or do you think thing. that the Great Awakening is what God ordained or something? But definitely. Well, they God ordained this sense that he ordained men to preach the gospel, to take his word seriously, to pray fervently, and when those things came to pass in multitudes, it began to change the people around them. Islam, on the, on the contrary, when they go and take over an area, they destroy everything. They literally obliterate stuff. Like you go to the certain areas where there used to be Christian history, where Muslims are in control right now, you can't even find a trace of the Christian history now because they destroyed it all. Sure. They obliterated it. But it, but if we look back to like the Ottoman Empire or something, they were compared to the Catholic countries that were, which I know you would say Christian, but were, that were in Europe, the Ottomans were far more uh, allow, allowing with religious freedom. They only had like extra taxes on like Jews or Christians or whatever. I mean, there's, there's no doubt there's been some Muslim empires that are more lenient and liberal, but true Islam, if you read the Quran and the Hadiths and you, you look at Muhammad's example and what he did, there's no way that would come to pass. No way that would come that way. You, you, you don't get to choose. If, if you're in a Muslim nation, if they allow you to practice a different religion, you cannot try to proselytize somebody and you have to pay the Jesus tax. Okay, so otherwise you're put to death. And in most Muslim nations, they they find out you're, you were Muslim and became a Christian, they'll kill you. So. Christians wouldn't do those kind of things. Like, it, like, like in Saudi Arabia, this would happen today. Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Northern Africa, Saudi Arabia. Morocco's very liberal. I don't not, I'm not saying every nation. I'm just giving you general areas. Uh, throughout Indonesia and that area, it's the same thing. So, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm painting with a broad brush. I can't say every single Muslim's this way, or even every single Muslim nation, but as a whole. And as an example, Muhammad gave, and as the teachings of the Quran give, that's what happens. Now, on the opposite side, the example of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, are nothing like that. You don't go into an area and destroy an area. You go into an area and preach the gospel and see people saved, and it affects the area in a good way, not by law, but by a natural occurrence, because people's hearts are being changed. Interesting. So I want to step back just a little bit. If you believe that the Great Awakenings in the United States were God-ordained or whatever, inspired by God, why do you think that Muhammad was not? Well, that's, that's, I think you could probably figure the answer to that question out, can't you? It's two different religions. It's two different religions. Oh, okay, so because you're a Christian, you just assume the Great Awakenings were God ordained, but because it's another religion, it can't be? Obviously not, it couldn't be. Islam promotes a different God than Christianity does. They're even close to the same God. So how could they both be ordained by God? But a My God. Say, but a Muslim would say that. Of course they would. Yeah. Well, most of them would. Some of them aren't bold enough to say that, but yeah, they should say that. So, so my, my question would be the same to a Muslim or a Christian. How are you so sure that your religion is correct? And you know what well, I can do an internal critique of Islam and find out how false it is. For example... Like, like finding contradictions between the Quran? Yeah. I know we've gone, in the past we've gone through... There's no contradictions in the Bible. Oh, we can go through. We can go but but when, it comes to, when it comes to the Quran, for example, the Quran teaches that 
Allah has no son. Has no what? No son. Uh -huh. It denies the Trinity. Uh -huh. Right? It says, yes, Christ is just a prophet. Yeah. It says, prophets can't lie. Yeah. It says, if you have questions about what I've written, go to the people of the book. The people of the book are Christians and Jews. So they go to Christians, and he says, go to the Injil, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says, go to the prophets and the Psalms. They go to those. All of those things teach against what they believe. They teach against... Well, I don't think, I don't think they think John is the gospel. John wouldn't be a holy book. I'm trying to figure out what they can That's not true. That's why I'm over here. All the, all, the only way they reply to that is not that it's not a book. They reply to, oh, it's been corrupted. That's the only way they provide to it. They provide to it. So, so yeah, the Injil, the Psalms, the prophets, the law, they all contradict that God has no son, God is in the Trinity, Jesus died on the cross. All these things are contradicted by that Bible. So, when, and, and here's the thing, all the manuscripts we have to this day that go be, go before Islam, all of them say exactly the same. Yeah, the, the ones that are prior to Islam's formation, you know, 600s AD, that they all say the same thing they say now. There's not one manuscript out there that says God has no son, that Jesus didn't die on the cross, that there is no Trinity. These things that they, they deny, that the Bible teaches, that all the manuscripts we have teach it. So I, I asked myself, well, if, if the Bible we have now is become corrupted, where are these manuscripts so-called that teach what Allah teaches in the, in the Quran? And they have no answer for it. And they say, well, God's words become corrupted. But then they'll say, here's the contradiction, then they'll say, well, the, the Quran cannot become corrupted because it's God's word. Now, wait a minute now, if the Bible's become corrupted, and it was God's word, what makes you think the Quran can't become corrupted? So they have a bad standing to put so, it there. So do you believe if there's a contradiction in a holy book, that holy book should be discarded? Yeah, so there's a con if, if, if it's claiming to be the source of God, and God is omniscient, all-knowing, and God is the one who authored the scripture, and God's the one who preserves the scripture, then yes, by definition, it can't be connected to contradiction. So if I can show you a contradiction in the Bible, it have to be thrown out we, We've done this before. I know. Well, and, and, we have a new audience. You want to run through it? Not really. No, we, we've already uh, we, got... we can run through Judas throwing the gold pieces into the Every temple. The... How many pieces? I don't remember exactly. Uh, so you don't even know. Oh, really? So you don't even know. Can I ask you a question? Have you checked the tags on your shirt, pants, shoes, and bags to make sure there's no mixed fabrics? Because the Bible does clearly state you're not supposed to wear mixed fabrics. Actually, the Old Testament, and this is written to priests, says that you can't have linen and wool together. I have neither linen nor wool on me, nor am I a priest of the Old Testament. Do you, do you eat pork regularly? Because it does state that pigs that, are once again, devils. Once again, that was, writ that was written to the Israelites. I'm not an Israelite. I'm a, it was written to God's people at the time. It, it was, was written, written to the Israelites. Israelites. It's, not, it's not written. Yeah. It's not, it's not written to Christians, New Covenant, New Testament Christians. So then, why do you believe you have to follow laws beyond the Noahide? Because there's laws in the New Testament. Because Jesus Christ came back. Well, who's 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 who said the laws? I don't, I, if you want to answer it, don't listen to his answers. Listen to my answers. Okay. I mean, you know, why, I'm the Christian. Why he, guys, he's an agnostic. Why are you guys listening to Paul anyway? He's just some guy. No, Paul's an apostle of Jesus Christ. Well, he showed himself to me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Thank you for addressing modestly again for standing up for truth. Thank you for your encouragement. Keep it up. So, I am just interested in the Sir. What do you think happens to Jews? Are, are we still God's chosen people now that Jesus has come? Yeah, so, so Jews are God's chosen people in this sense, that God protects them, he's preserving them, because so many people have tried to wipe Jews out throughout the centuries, yeah. and they haven't been successful, and for one reason only, because God has protected them. Not only that, God, the land God gave to them, they promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they finally came to the land with Joshua to receive it, it's still their land. And so he kicked them out for a while, this time it was like 1900 years almost. He brought it back in 1948. And I believe according to the prophecy of New Testament scripture, there's gonna be a third temple built by the Jews. They'll begin to offer sacrifices again. And Antichrist will come in and defile that temple. And three and a half years after that happens, Jesus will return. And at that, and at that point in time, whichever Jews are still alive, they'll recognize Jesus as their Messiah and turn to him and follow him. I think you have a lot of faith in the persuasion abilities of Jesus Christ. But Jesus is, is your if you're a Jew, he's your Messiah. He's not. The I Messiah mean, well, hasn't come yet. I, 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 will, I will attest. There are such things as Messianic Jews. What do you think of them? 
Well, they're following the truth. I mean, I can't, well, speak, I can't speak for all of them. I have, but you know, I am one of them. Uh, I'm, I, but I consider myself Jewish. I consider myself non-Pauline. I believe in, a, I believe in a Yeshua as a, uh, as a, a, I guess you could say a prophet. But I'm not sure about all the uh, Pauline stuff, the stuff that the Catholic Church is saying. Okay. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't define you as a Messianic Jew then, but what, how you're describing yourself. What would you describe me as? I would describe you as a Messianic Jew. You're, as you're, a Jew, I describe you as a Messianic Jew. You're, right. you're, prob you're just a Jew is a little confused, that's all. You, you haven't come to the full knowledge of the truth. A little confused. Yeah. Uh, you haven't come to the full knowledge of the truth yet. Well, I've, I've studied theology for okay. a pretty long time. For a pretty long time. How old are you? Uh, 18. So you haven't studied for a long time. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's <laughs> 40 years. Well, fair enough. So if the Old Testament states that the Messiah would be a king of the Jews, would be a hero of the Jews, why is it that the Messiah that you subscribe to, Jesus, was persecuted, put on the cross, and executed and thrown into a pauper's grave? Because just like the Jews in the first century, you missed the scripture talking about his first coming. You're referring to the talking about a second coming. Mm -hmm. So in the second coming, he is going to rule and reign. He's going to, he's going to, in fact, when, when he steps up on the Mount of Olives, it'll split in two. And the Jews who are still in Jerusalem will flee through that valley and he'll wipe out their enemies. At that point in time, uh, the land of Israel will be filled with 200 million men army who are there to destroy Israel for once and for all. Once for all. So, and God will step in and stop that. So do you think it's possible that Christian writers were aware of the Old Testament and took the prophecies that were in those books that, to put them into their books to make them be fulfilled? Well, so you're... you're so you're, you're seeing like... No, no, come on, come on. I was having... No, no, no. I love you. Hey, God created me gay, so God loves me. <laughs> I don't mean that in the negative way. I'm just more curious. Same deal as everybody else is here. Preach the word of God. So, did you think this was a good approach? Like, did you actually think that people were going to come to it? Cause I, like, That's what has happened. That's what has happened. What do you mean? I mean, but you say it has to happen, but nobody's really responding well to it. Like, I mean, like, I, I understand your approach. This is your evangelism. Your like, you have sharing to know the gospel, that what you should be doing, but, like, like, you yeah. see, You seem to think that I have control over them. I mean... Do I have control over them? Or do they have free will? Uh, what is going on? But basically, like, oh. Right up the end of this from getting pussy, bitch. I mean, I don't know. I like the other guy. Four. 
what is the term on the other side, a fake Hebrew Israelite? Yeah. What is that? Okay, so I run into them often in Atlanta and other big cities. Mm -hmm. it's people who have a darker color skin, mm -hmm. who say that because of the color of their skin, they are the real Israelites. And everybody else the 12th is, tribe? Yeah, everybody else is damned to hell. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have it on my sign. Not talking about the people who are in Israel right now. What's that? Then that we all sin every day and we can't help it and everybody's the same, then you're right. We, we couldn't say the things we say. But the Bible teaches that Christians are actually holy. They actually obey God and do what He says. So if you're obeying God and doing what He says, and that's what God requires of you to actually call yourself a Christian legitimately, then you call other people to do the same thing. And so if the Bible says someone is going to hell for a certain sin, I have a right and an obligation to tell them that, and I love for them that they don't go that place. You know, if, if, a little, if one of these buildings was on fire right here, I'd, I'd be under an obligation, I'd love the people in there to warn them to get out of that building. That's not a temporal fire that's gonna end eventually. The fires of hell are eternal, will never end. And so yeah, I have an obligation to do that. And when I, when I say they're, that they're on their way to hell, it's not a final judgment like, you have no hope. You couldn't be saved. You couldn't repent. If I believed that, I wouldn't bother coming out here. You understand that? Yeah. So, so, so I'm, I'm trying to tell people the truth, to warn them that they might turn from their sins and be saved. The same way I've turned from my sins 25 years ago and got saved. You know, and, I, and, I, and to my own shame, I haven't been perfect since then. I'm not declaring that. But I've been a, I've been a holy man. And if, if I've sinned in the past 25 years, repent of it immediately and begin to walk in righteousness again. Yeah, and that's great. I sin. I've, I've sinned today. I've done many things. So has everyone else here. But Actually, I haven't sinned today. Well, yeah, and my friends have sinned in the Bible that we don't know of. And like what? the littlest thing. But my sister, it, it hurts me so much because she said she's never going to believe. Jesus walked right in front of her. She would never worship him. Right. But that's the thing because I believe that it's, it's really hard for me to see that because she means everything to me and I want to see her in heaven and I really hope I get there too but I've been saved and baptized. I believe I'm there. And Jesus loves us all. But I feel like God, it's on God's timing to save her. And it's not, it's on God's timing to save her. And okay, no well, one I mean, forced that, that. When it comes to saving people though. I actually felt a presence yeah. one day and that's when I realized he's real and that's when I saw him. When it, when it comes to saving people, though, and, and you're saying it's on God's schedule, well, God's schedule is right now. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Hold on a second. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. So the fact that they're not saved right now is not because it's not God's schedule. It's because it's not their schedule. Well, they have free will. Everyone right now, everyone here right now could choose to repent of all their sins, follow Jesus Christ, and obey Him if they wanted to. The fact that they're not is not because it's not God's schedule. Because something you know inferior in God or our lack of ability in God, God is influencing people. God is bringing the word of God to people that they might hear it, believe it, and be saved, and then obey Him. 
because Christians obey God. They don't live in sin. They don't sin every single day. Not what a Christian does. And if someone's sinning every day, they'll just like the world around them. They're not a Christian. They're a hypocrite. The Bible teaches. And why don't you all decide to teach love? If God is love, why do you all come here with hate? This is not hate. You all come with things to be provocative. No, no, young man, you don't know where our intentions are, number one. Okay. What are your intentions with all these things? Going? To preach. To, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. To, you asked the question, I'm going to answer. What are my intentions? Yes. To preach the word of God. You're not preaching when you come out here, and your whole intention no. is to create an issue. No, so you just you just judge my intention. You don't know no, that. I can't judge your intention. No, you can't. No, no, I'm not. You, you can't judge my intentions. How do you how do you know my intentions? You come out here with hatred. You're not I don't have hatred. I don't have hatred. Well, you're not teaching the love of God. That's not true either. What are you teaching? Are you a sinner? Every day, you're a sinner. Okay, so that, that's that, that's really what the issue is here: is that you love your sin. And, and, when, and when I when I when I come and bring you and tell me I love my sin, you're doing it. That's how I know you love it. You were sinning. No, I'm not. In the Old Testament, it said it was against God to wear clothing of multiple textiles. You were wearing multiple. It actually textiles. doesn't say that. And he wearing it in the Old Testament. It says it says you have to show me. You're the one making the claim, not me. It says linen and wool, and it was for the high. It was for the priest. I'm not a priest, Israelite priest, and I'm not wearing linen or wool. So that's un un unapplicable to me. But the fact is, the reason why you're coming against what we're teaching here is because you're a sinner yourself, and you love your sin too much, and God's calling you to repent of your sin, and so you're offended. You keep saying, you keep saying, you keep saying that. But what does that mean? God literally loves everyone. But what does that mean? He loves everyone. What does love mean? Does that mean He accepts them the way they are? He accepts everyone. Bible never says that. The love of God is displayed for you on the cross of Jesus Christ. Christianity is a joke now. Like, it's literally a joke. It's all when you're living in sin every day, it is a joke. You're right. Have you ever went to a college and everyone actually repents? No. Everyone makes fun of this. Because every Christian... The fact that people don't repent is not my fault. The fact that people don't repent is because they're sinners. Listen, when, when you're when you're the, the representation of Christianity and you sin every single day and live like everybody else, you're the joke, not me. I stand up for the truth. What do you do that's not, how are you not sinning? How in your every, how do you recognize when you sin or when you don't sin, when you claim to not sin? People when I break God's law. No, you don't know that. How do you know that we sin every day? Are you God? It's a human flaw. That is even the Bible never teaches human. that. The, if God is pure, that means there's two sides. There's purity and there's impurity. You're impure. God impurity is, is not human. Yes. Impurity is a choice. You choose to sin. Don't blame it on your humanity. God made your humanity. You're blaming it on God when you blame it on your humanity. God made you in His image. But it's the reason you're not God is, is because you're impure. impure. Not being God does not make you impure. Are angels God? Are they impure? Hell yeah! No, two-thirds of angels have been pure their whole existence. So that defeats what you just said. And there's men in the Bible who are called pure and perfect by God. What do you say about that? So you have no excuse. What you're, what you're fishing for is some kind of excuse to keep being a sinner. You have no excuse to keep being a sinner. You understand that? I'm not ashamed of sin. Have you me. should be ashamed of sin because God said so. Okay. You should be severely ashamed of your sin, and that's one of the things that motivates you to change and stop sinning, that you feel shame for it. And listen, young man, if you don't feel shame for your sin, your conscience is probably seared. You're in a very bad place if you don't feel shame and guilt over your sin. Not in sin and not feeling no shame over. You're in the worst place you could possibly be. Claiming to be a Christian in sin, feeling no shame, feeling no guilt. You're in a bad place, man. You're in a bad place. You, you, you think your your identity as a sinner is, it means you're good. You're not good. No one is perfect. Do you think God is perfect? In Christ I am, yes. Only God is perfect. Then that's flawed thinking. What's that? Then that is flawed thinking. You are not a perfect person. But the Bible teaches. God is perfect and we can't compare to him. We cannot compare. We can never I didn't say I was perfect like God. I said I'm perfect in Christ. And that means I've had my past sins forgiven. I've forsaken them. Hold on, hold on. And now I'm living a holy life. I'm not living a wickedness. Is this a holy life? Huh? Is this it? Is what it? This protest in this stuff? Is this This isn't protest. It's preaching the gospel. Can I have a question? Is this my only thing I do? No, that's not all I do. But yeah, but, but preaching the, the word of God is a big part of my life, for sure. Preaching the, you're supposed to be teaching the love of God. This is not love. You know what the love of God is. love. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you 1 John 5, 4. This is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. 
and his commandments are not burdensome. You believe the opposite of this. You don't believe in the love of God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You don't keep Jesus' commandments, so you don't love him. And you're going to tell me about the love of God? You don't know what the love of God is. I don't have to know to know that it exists. I don't have to know it personally. You have to know what it is to know if I'm teaching it or not. You're claiming I don't teach it, but you don't even know what it is. But if God is love, what is love about saying, if you are these things, you are going to hell? Because God says it, and God is love. But you're not teaching someone to repent. You're telling them they've already done this. Right here. Right here, man. Right here. Read it. Jesuspreachers.com. Read it. Yeah. Read the whole thing. Plug in your website. Read the whole thing, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm plugging my website. Read the whole thing, sir. Listen to your filthy mouth, man. You're a wicked hypocrite. You're not right with God. You should feel shame over your filthy mouth. I don't feel shame. Well, then you're going to hell, man. You're in a very dangerous place. Why can't I? Say so. God does that. Where does the Bible say that? Where does the Bible say only God can say that? Where does the Bible say only God can say that? It doesn't. And he has no idea what just happened. Oh, no, he does. I never said, I never said that. Of course, it never came out of my mouth. I never said that. So says the, the one who says every day. So says the one who says every day. I've been saved and he saved you have, me. Saved from what? Saved from what? Saved from what? He saved me from all my past things. All what about your present sins? I'm still. So you haven't been saved. 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 You're still in your sins. You prove you haven't been saved. By your own confession, you prove you haven't been saved. You're still in sin according to your own profession. You sin every single day. Therefore, you've been saved from nothing. Nothing. You're still in it. What's that? No, I don't have all answers. God does, though. Yeah. You don't listen to God's answers. That's your problem. You don't listen to God. You listen to your own answers. You listen to the devil's answers. You listen to God's answers. I know it's come out of your mouth. I know you said about yourself. Unless you're a liar and believe in your own profession about yourself. Because the people like you who live in wickedness every single day and claim to be Christians. That you're still a sinner? That you're still a sinner? That you're still a sinner? That's your story? What kind of story is that? What has God delivered you from? How, is God's, how does God's power have any practical effect on your health? You've told me your story. You're still a sinner. I'm not a sinner. I, there's a lot of profession about myself. I live, I live for Jesus Christ. I obey Him. And the Bible tells me to. I'm not protesting, I'm preaching. Well, whatever. Why come here? I've never seen you on campus, and I've been here six years. I've, I've been here twice, two or three times a semester for the last four years. Really? Yes. You're not part of the campus ministry? Nope. You hate the Mormons? Uh, I don't hate anybody. So, typically, Christians do. No, Christians don't, like true Christians don't hate anybody. They love everybody. They love their enemies. They and pray for the enemies. You love your enemies? I sure do. The gays? Of course I do. Sure. If I didn't love them, I wouldn't even be here. Sure. Yo, how'd you I wouldn't tell them the truth if I didn't love them. I'd stay home and not deal with their nonsense. <laughs> what, is, what is truth, though? This is fire and brimstone stuff. I saw this years ago. This was old South stuff. This isn't new. This is Bible stuff. This is Bible stuff. What's wrong with that? sinners and all this BS. That's what it is. But the Bible teaches. That's <laughs> old. So, so, be, so because it's old, I mean it's wrong? Sometimes. That's not because, not because it's old, though. You got all the answers. You're wasting your time, I didn't say I had all the answers. I told you the exact opposite of that a second ago. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I didn't say that. For real. It's okay. It's okay if you can be a must. Well, it's not okay if you can be a must. That man said, because I know if you don't be a must. I don't know what's going on. But still, why are you doing it? Because they want to help us. Who? Right, it's not an exhaustive sign, young man. Not every sinner sinners on the sign. The sign's only so big. So I don't, I don't. Yellow light. If, if, if you have a problem with what I have a sign, make your own sign. Make your own sign. Well, well, I'm sorry you aren't, but I am, and I'm gonna put on my sign what I want to put on my sign. So why are you doing this? For the glory of God. What'd you say? Yeah, what's wrong with that? 
There's something wrong with that because you look desperate. I am desperate to see them saved. But they don't go to hell. Well, whatever you say, man. They got you, dog. I didn't vote. What, what about what the oh. Didn't vote. But you believe it or not, it's true. But you stereotyped me. You thought I was a Republican, thought I was a Trump supporter, but I'm not. I'm neither of those things. But your, your stereotype failed, young man. You just, you just tried to stereotype me. But you're wrong. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a conservative. I'm not a Trump supporter. Trump, right? This is Actually, you're a liar. I didn't vote at all. So says you. So says you. I love gay people. That's why I tell them the truth. That's the truth. The truth. Oh, yeah. I show my pictures so many. Uh, the, it's like the demons getting a fan of that. They're like, oh, you look beautiful as a woman. No, no, no. I say I'm handsome now. And I heard everybody, a lot of the piss on hell, they're talking about, oh, we all sinners. Oh, this is a piss on hell. I say I'm a, I'm a saint, born again, set free by the blood of Jesus. That's right. Amen, brother. Wow, it's crazy out here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. So how long you been um, how long you been evangelizing on Christ's campus? Um since 2004. 18 years. Oh. Yeah, the, the Holy Spirit wants to victim. Oh, he's dealing with them right now. Yeah. They're just responding to the conviction in the wrong way. Yeah, and then suddenly they, it's like they, they're around their friends, and yeah. then it's like they're, pride. It's like they're ashamed. Yeah, too. it's pride. It popped up in pride. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right, because the Holy Spirit is convicted them. But not everybody responds to conviction the same way. Like you see in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, uh -huh. they were cut to the heart, the Bible says, and 3,000 got saved, right? Then when Stephen was preaching in Acts chapter 7, they were cut to the heart, they gnashed their teeth, they plugged their ears and stunned them to death. So people respond in different ways. I will say one thing. It's finally made this campus interesting. What's that? I'll be honest. It's made the campus interesting? Yeah. Oh. Because they used to, they, my brother used to go here and he would tell me the religious people would show up and then there would be a bunch of like people that would shout them down and then they would just, they stop coming. So it is, it, if it's done anything, it's made the campus more interesting. I'm not going to stop coming. I know that you don't care, but it's... it's, it's I'm it's, not going to stop. I didn't say I didn't care. I said I'm not going to stop coming, is what I said. Yeah, no, I get it. Had you come before? Well, I, I told, like as I told you earlier, I've been coming here for four years now. Two or three times a semester for four years. Huh. And there was a break for, for COVID because yeah. they, they had the whole campus shut down. But besides that, I've been coming three or four times a semester the last four years. Okay. Since okay. fall 2018. What made you become an atheist? Um, I saw how Christians acted. Okay. I saw enough about Christianity. Christianity is just the history of the Jews. So, at least the Old Testament is. So, not everybody who claims to be a Christian is a Christian. Sure. The Bible teaches that. So, if Christians are acting in wicked ways, they're acting contrary to the teachings of Jesus, sure. the example of Jesus, and the teachings of the New Testament. So, according to Jesus, they wouldn't even be Christians. But those who act according to what the New Testament says, they're the actual Christians. Christianity was spread by the soul. How do you reconcile that? No, no that, that's Roman Catholicism, and that's not Christianity.
That's first. Catholics, where is that on your list? Is that on your list? Well, idolatry, idolaters and hypocrites. What about, what about Orthodox? Eastern um, Orthodox? I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with them, but... This, well, the, the, does God have a problem with them? It doesn't matter I, what you I don't, Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a representation of God here, sure. so I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking for him necessarily, but I'm just simply saying that I don't think he would either. But my, my point is this, that anyone, no matter what the denomination is, what the group is, if they act contrary to the Word of God, contrary to Jesus' example, they are by definition not following Jesus. So, I mean, if someone's killing in the name of Jesus, I mean, Jesus is ashamed of them. What's your name? Scott. Scott. So I'm Kerrigan, Scott. Scott, if you had friends around you, and they all knew who, what, you're, what you were like, and they were trying to follow your good example, whatever that may be, and they said, yeah, I, I follow Scott. And then a guy came along and says, I follow Scott. He went killing people and raping people and being child molester. Would that person really be a follower of Scott? So that's what you have with Jesus. People who claim to be followers of Jesus who really aren't, and those who really are followers of Jesus Christ. Now, if your problem is with the real followers of Jesus Christ, who are actually living holy lives and preaching the truth, then that's a different that's, that's a different story. But if your problem is with those who are fakes and hypocrites, then I would say don't judge Christianity and Jesus by the hypocrites. Because they don't properly represent it. You know, they're fakes. Well, the Klan is wicked too. I mean, they're not, they're not right with God. They're racists. They're murderers. They didn't like Catholics. Well, it's not that I don't like Catholics. I was raised a Catholic. I have family who are Catholics. It's just not biblical. It's not. It's not right. Not a, a true, true representation of Christianity. It's a fake and a fraud. They have some truth, obviously. They believe in the Trinity, for example. That's true. Um, they believe in free will. That's true. They believe that someone who used to be a Christian can become a non-Christian. That's true. But a lot of their main tenets, like praying to Mary, praying to sin, praying to saints, believing the Pope is the vicar of Christ on earth, you know, believing the church is the is the is the ultimate decider of what is true, what isn't. Those things aren't true. The Bible doesn't teach those things. But just like anyone else, I want them to be saved too. And I, I have family members who I've, I've preached to, I've witnessed to, and most of them won't get saved, but some have gotten saved. So, all I can do is tell them the truth. I do think it's like you're not handing out sunblock because you're pretty much saying everybody's going to burn. Well, sunblock won't save them. They need that S O N space block. Because only the Son of Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, can block them from hell. Hey, too, Scott. Okay. Are hey, you son to read, Scott? Are you son to read? Yeah, have a good day, man. Like me, 
April 6th, the night before the same thing, 2022, and did not be here to our vote. So you can read the Bible, but you had to do what the Word of God says. You can't be a hypocrite and say, oh, I'm going to read it and don't do it what it says. I do. I keep kosher. I don't make it. I don't make it. Okay, do you support LGBT? I do because God said uh, that I'm a But if you support LGBT, that's a wicked word. That's the way you can go to hell if you don't repent. Okay. Hell is a real place. You say you read the Bible. You say the Bible says it's all Hey, bro, just, just to give you a heads up, I wouldn't waste too much time with him. Man. Oh, okay. I've, I've spent like four different times with him. Okay. He's oh, more of a time waster than anything. Okay. That's just, where I recognize you for. Okay. Just to let you know. I got you. I yeah. understand. Thank you. Yeah. It's the truth. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, you just. one of them. It's one of them. Not. Just to check myself after I listen to myself preach later on. Upload it to YouTube. Probably go to see. Hear the gospel themselves. It's an objective witness in case something happens. Yeah. Objective witness. Just meeting you. How you too, man? So there's a lot of things you said I'm going to address, okay? Number one, the Bible doesn't say we can't judge. 1 Corinthians 2.15, so the spiritual man judges all things. He himself is rightly judged by no man. John 7.24, Jesus said, when you judge, judge with righteous judgment, not according to appearance. The Bible is all about people judging. In fact, you telling me I can't judge the judgment yourself. So but it seems hold on, like hold on, you're so, trying so, to play God by your No, 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 I'm not playing God. I'm telling you what God's going to do. 
how do you it, know it, what he's going to do? The Bible tells us what he's going to do. So, 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 when, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm dealing with it right now. Be patient and wait. So, so. God's message, bro. I'm going to keep it above Matthew 7, do not judge, or you two will be judged. Yeah, and I have no I problem like being judged. Real, like, some, but, but, like, okay. like, so being judged by God. Y'all are like well, listen, listen. When, when, when you have filthy lambs like, come out of your mouth, <laughs> when you have filthy lambs come out of your mouth, you're not a really a representation of Christ. I don't listen to you. Do y'all have a do y'all uh, do y'all have a reason to be here? Yeah. But what? the thing, what's the, the glory reason? of God? No, but like, did God tell y'all last night to like pull up? Or Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So last night he said, all right, go to KSU. No, he told me months ago actually when I reserved this spot. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. But if you're preaching so Jesus to Christians, saying not to judge, let him know a month in advance. No, Matthew 7 1 pull says, judge not lest you be judged, but the judgment you use will be measured back to you. I have no problem with this judgment being measured back to me. This is the judgment of God's word. And, and so, when, so when I like, hold on, hold on. So when I come here, when I come, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me. The way dialogue works is when I talk, then you talk. You wait till I'm done, then you talk. Actually, actually, I have not been talking very much today. I have talked about very much today at all. All right. Well, I'll just, I'll just go over here. I'm gonna someone else. That's all. It's okay. It's okay. Sure, if you'll listen for the answer. Yeah. I've had a lot of people who don't listen for answers. So, I respect your belief that, you know, like, it is hell to uh, do the things listed on this. I was wondering, like, personally, uh, like, if you, like, when you interact with people that are some of those things on the list, is it? Really, just purely like religious view that you think they're going to help. Like, do you get like? Would you be friends with someone like uh, something like this? Of course. Okay, that's what I was really. I, I think oftentimes they wouldn't be friends with me before I wouldn't be friends with them. Yeah. So, I mean, when, when you when you when you live the truth of God's word and you preach the truth of God's word, it has a separating effect as a way of dividing. Yeah. yeah. Has a way of. I'm talking to him right now. Has a way of dividing necessarily like a line in the sand right now i want people to come over the line and be with christ right repent of their sins and be right with god that's what i want for them but when i sit down with them and talk with them i'm here for four or five hours every time i come here talking to people who hate me right yeah. really yelling in my face screaming face, i'm being calm with them so yeah I, I do this at this campus alone two to three times each semester for the last four years so i mean that, that and i drive from almost two hours away i think that shows a measure of love you know that I want to enjoy those things for their sake. I don't do it for fun. I can be at home working, making money, be with my family, but I don't do that, so. That's just the thing. I think a lot of people approach you and, and think that you're hateful people, but I think they think that, you know, wrongfully, I think they're just trying to yeah. like, help people, and this is what you believe, and you're spreading your beliefs, but a lot of people are coming at you with, like, this aggression, and, like, I just think it's very unfair to you and your beliefs that people are coming here. So I just wanted to make sure, you know, and come talk to you to see if you really were, because everyone seems to think you're this hateful person, but I don't think that, and I just wanted to see how you I felt. think part of the issue is that people's definition of love and hate. They think hate is disagreeing with somebody or not approving of their lifestyle. And love is approving and accepting no matter what. The Bible doesn't teach love and hate that way. Love in the Bible is one of the greatest good for somebody. Hate in the Bible is one of the worst for somebody. Like hate would be, be saying, I want you to go to hell, go to hell. Yeah. Love love is, I, I don't want you, I want you to repent, I want you to be with God. I want you to be in this kingdom. That's love. Yeah. Yeah. That's Have you taken a college class? I don't know. Yeah. Why are you spreading hate? I'm not spreading hate. You are? Hell That's the truth. That's the truth of God's word. That's the truth. Okay, so do you take medication? Yeah. No, I don't take medication. Why do you come to work? Hey, man. I, I love me some Jesus and all, right? But but I was like wondering why y'all out here. I was wondering. I was just wondering why I here to preach God's here. word. That's what's up. That's what's up. Can I dab you up? Now I'll be up fast. Preach God's word. That's what's up. 
Sure. Um, do you think this kind of rhetoric is making people push being pushed away from? Well, it's not rhetoric; it's God's word. Or do you think it might be like pushing people away? Well, God, God's word, um, if it encounters a hard heart, a prideful heart, yeah, it pushes people away because they're not because God's word is something wrong with it. There's something wrong with their heart. But if someone is humble, the word of God takes root in their heart and brings forth a tree of righteousness. They get changed by the word of God. So the word of God, the preaching of the word of God is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved is the power of God and the salvation. And so when you go into somewhere and preach the word of God, there's a, there's a parable in the Bible called the parable of the sowers. The parable of the sower. And so it, the sower is sowing the seed. The seed's pure. The seed's good. But it hits cement. It hits rocky soil. It hits thorny soil. And it hits good soil. And only the good soil has the best results. It hits a piece. I mean, you, you, I thought I sow a seed over here on the brick. It's not going to produce any fruit, is it? You know, so I, when I come here, there's people with all different kinds of heart conditions. Hard, rocky, thorny, or good. I don't determine the state of the heart. All I determine is the quality of the seed, which is God's word. And I try to preach that as, as best as I can. Well, but you said how much you want to preach love, right? And that's why you're here. You're trying to preach love versus hate. Well, that's not how what is, I said. No. How is this not love? That's not, that's not what I said. I didn't well, say what were you talking about? Because it's disgraceful to the Christian religion. Like, as a Christian, this is embarrassing to me. It's like, you claim to be a Christian doesn't make you a Christian. You understand that, right? Well, okay, you're claiming to be a Christian. God, you're like, spreading How do you know that? Because I... I've given life to science. But can't someone just say that and not be true? Yeah, of course you can. Okay, so how do you know? What's the proof of it? There is no proof. But me well, then you're not a Christian. I want to be a Christian. Then you're not a Christian. You know, Christians can't tell Christians. Christians. Said, so how do, you, how do you determine that you're a Christian? Well, Jesus said you should know them by their fruit. What? And so, so Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if you have sin in your life, or you're sinning every single day like most professing Christians here are, then you're not alright with God. You're a hypocrite. Oh my God. And 1 John, book of 1 John, familiar with that in the Bible? 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 John 2, 3 through 4. Now by this we know that we know Jesus. So did Hold I on, I'm, 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 giving, I'm giving you the word of God. Do you want to listen to it? Now by this we know that we know Jesus, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know Jesus, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar. And so the are truth. you telling me that you're a perfect person then? In Christ you, I am. never, ever committed a sin? Like no, I didn't say that. I didn't say you that. You follow all of his commandments. You do yep. all of that stuff. You've yep. never had sex before marriage. Like, none so you, of that. You keep, you keep changing your question. You've never harmed someone. You keep, you keep changing your question. No, first, first you're asking me, have you never done this? Then you're saying, are you still doing this? Well, but you're saying that a perfect person in Christ follows all the commandments and all this stuff. But nobody is perfect. That's literally what the church if you're, teaches. If you're talking, God if you're talking us about, we sin. If you're talking about us ever having sin, of course all have sinned. If you're talking about someone so as, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you're, talk, you if, if you're talking about someone living for Jesus, they're not a sinner any longer. They obey God now. They're a saint of God. So why can't you live for Jesus and also be gay? Because you're that's a, sinning, but because for that's Jesus. a sin. But you're so, also you can't live for Jesus and be a sinner. How do you take no, you can't be a sinner and live for Jesus. But you're I'm, taking I'm, not I'm not a sinner. No, a I'm not a sinner. No. Every single you're person not a sinner. Nope. No. No. I'm not a sinner. This is no, I'm not a sinner. Why is it embarrassing for me? Because you're claiming to be perfect. Like, in Christ. I didn't say I was Jesus. Have you taken a science class? Have you been to college? What does that mean? Are you educated? What does that mean? You're walking around like an idiot. You yeah, can't well. claim I mean, that you're a perfect person. To be fair, that all just makes you a better person. I mean, college, but you can't claim to be perfect. You can't. Thank you for what you're doing. Okay. I know it, it's kind of hard, especially with how everything is right now. But I just want to say God bless you and just keep doing the Lord's work. Appreciate that. Thank you for your encouragement. So do you think I'm going to hell? Because I'm Muslim. So. I think you can read a sign for yourself. I'm sorry? It says I'm going to hell right there. So, so then you're going to answer that, right? Can I ask, why can't you accept other faith? Like, what is what is so wrong with, especially like Judaism or Islam? Like, why, why is the Christian faith just that? God doesn't accept you. 
No, I'm sorry? God doesn't accept you. Where? Like, is there a verse? You have exact verses, chapters, just Genesis? What, like, is there, where, where in the Bible does it say that? John 14, 6, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And Acts 4, 12, says, no other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved but Jesus Christ. You understand they follow the same God. It's, it's both know, God. In Islam, you didn't listen, did you? No, no, no. You didn't on. listen to the right person I gave you. Can you hear it again? I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm curious. What? Can you repeat the verse? It doesn't sound like you're serious. I'm sorry? It doesn't sound like you're serious. He's asking you a question. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. completely serious. I'm, I'm okay. literally being... Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you the verse. Let's see if you listen to okay. I'll give you the verses one more time. In John 14, 6, okay. the words of Jesus. It says, I am the way, okay. the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Okay? And Acts 4.12, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved but Jesus Christ. Okay? So those two verses right there, I can go to more, but those two verses right there exclude everything else. Jesus himself said, I'm not one of the ways, I'm the way. I'm not one of the truths, I'm the truth. I'm not one of the lives, I'm the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. That's totally up to your interpretation, if, any, if anything. I mean, that, 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 that's one way of looking at it, but they both you both follow the same God, but there's both different... I, did, I knew you weren't Abraham. serious. I knew you weren't 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 serious. What? You know, uh, Muslims believe in Jesus Christ, right? I'm Muslim. I believe in Jesus Christ. your lies somewhere else or to Kia someplace else. Jesus. Thank you for defining just, Christianity for me. Yes, okay, walk yeah. away. Thanks for defining walk Christianity for me. Because you're not listening to me at all. Why would I listen to you? You don't have the truth. Where, where is the knife? Are you a serious listener, young man? Are you here to mock me? Sure. I, I try to be respectful. I was talking to one of your colleagues. Okay. I was trying to be respectful. Um, because I think that um, everyone deserves to be treated the way that you'd like to be treated. Yeah. So I will not be disrespectful. I didn't have a question. Okay, go ahead. I didn't get to ask my other friend because there's a lot of people. Sure. Um, and I honestly, I don't think it's okay that people are coming up to you, taking videos of you. I, I, I don't agree with that because I don't, I don't like what we all are doing, but at the same token, I don't like that. I don't think that's fair. Okay. Um, so my main question, because I was I was raised in a Baptist church okay. for 10 years. I, I'm only not Christian because of that church. Um, and my beliefs changed because of how I was treated in that church. But, which is, you know, not neither here nor there. Sci science. You're not blaming me for that, right? No, no, okay. absolutely right. not. Science, um, and science, the general term, says that like uh, sexuality is a predisposition. You are born with the sexuality, um, and it's not a learned thing. So my wonder is, if God creates all life and you're born with a predisposition, predisposition towards the sexuality, then how? How is it that you, you as a person and your community don't believe that God condones that? Okay, so if, if, your, if your premise is true, your conclusion is accurate. Okay, so if you're right that God made you a certain way and you couldn't but be that way, he has no right to judge you or condemn you or put you in hell for that. Right. Okay, but the Bible teaches the exact opposite when your premise. It teaches that, that you haven't been born a certain way. No one's born a sinner. We're all born innocent babies. We all learn things, good and evil. I don't think it's... Tina, can I, let, me, let me finish real quick. Yes, yes. And we all are born with a conscience that God gives us to teach us right from wrong. Okay, so when it comes to these things, this is precisely why, besides what science says, because I don't, I don't believe science says what you said a second ago. I'm saying if I were to go with that, I would disagree with science over the Bible any day. Okay. So... I, I, would, I would call it science so-called. So, so, when, so when it comes to life in general, God has never said in the Word of God, I make people a certain way, okay? 
So that's why he condemns people for their sin because it's a choice. Every sin's a choice. No one's forced to do any sin. Go ahead. So can I assume that yeah. even if you don't, um, even if you don't believe in the the science behind it, totally fine. Um, if it's not a predisposition, does the Bible not also say love thy neighbor? And I don't, I, I really genuinely don't think that changing somebody's sexuality, somebody's way of life, or trying to control it, is loving thy neighbor in the way that God intended. Okay, so so when it when, when it comes to when it comes to love, love is. I'll just define love according to the Bible. There's people define love all kinds of ways today that are inaccurate. Love is accepting me the way I am. That's not love. Love is wanting the greatest good for you. Okay. And the one who knows the greatest good for you is God, because he's your creator. <laughs> he made you in his image. He knows what is best for you. And he has your best in mind. He wants what is best for you. He has care for you and love for you. Many people in the world don't, but he does. Okay? And he says the greatest good for all of us is that we repent of all our sins, turn from all of them, and turn to Jesus Christ in faith, childlike, humble faith, and in that moment in time, God will change you from the inside out. He'll make you what the Bible calls born again. Okay, they did to me 25 years ago. Before that, I was a fornicator, a drunkard, a liar, a thief. They changed me. I don't believe that thrusting your religion upon people who are just trying to love who they love is the right way to treat people See, that's in, in, on earth. I don't okay. think that that's, okay. that's fair. I understand that, but but we understand what the Bible says is to go into all the but world. I don't, we don't abide. Well, no, but, but I am a Christian. Do you think I understand so, that so, so, so when I, position I, on me? No, 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 Shows we didn't. We didn't make these people come here. We didn't even invite them here. We just so began to preach the word of God, like they. Like, I understand. Like we have but you're on and, our campus where we live uh, for four years. It's actually not your campus. We live here for four years. You don't own it. I'm a taxpayer. So you guys are paying for here. Four years. That this shows Christ's compassion. Excuse me. I'm, I'm talking here. You're being. You're interrupting. You're being interrupting. Okay. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. See you later. See you later. See you later. Uh, it's a website online. So okay, I, I guess I'll keep I, I can I can say I can tell you're a mocker. It's, it's obvious. You're a mocker. I saw you walk up earlier. You're a mocker. I'm not talking to you. Don't waste don't waste my time. Um, I wanted to say coming out here. Uh, like this yelling crowd. I respect it anyway because people are going to yell and disagree, but actually taking the time to have a conversation with someone who disagrees with me is pretty important, I think. But um, yelling is going to change their mind with their minds. So. Um, yeah, just thanks for coming here and sharing your opinion about these things. But I always ask a question. Um, do you think you changed people's minds coming here today and altered the way of thinking? Or yeah, well, I mean, I only have so much power. People have free will given to them by God. I can't make them change anything. Even Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, the best preacher ever, didn't make people do anything. And so if I was Jesus Christ in the flesh today, it wouldn't make anyone here change, let alone one person or five or ten. So what the Word of God teaches is that you go into all the world and preach the gospel, and people are convicted of their sins, and they need to choose whether they're going to repent of their sins and follow Jesus Christ and obey him, or continue in sins and go to hell in the end. So all I can do is this present the truth to people. This show Christ's compassion. You need to drive a wedge in between people who might come to Christ. So all, all I can do is present the truth the best I know how. I've been doing this for 19 years now, oh, wow. preaching the Word of God. So I've been doing it. I've done it thousands of times. Okay. And I'm, I'm not. I don't by any means think I'm the perfect preacher. I've, I've grown over the last 19 years. I've gotten better at what I'm doing. But um, I know what the Word of God teaches, and so. I'm going to tell people the truth and keep doing it no matter how they respond to it. They can hate me and kill me if they want to. They're not going to shut me up. And I'll continue to do it in love, too, no matter how much they hate me. So, with gay people, do you feel as though they're going to hell for being gay? Yeah, homosexuality, like any other sin in the Bible, is a choice. No one is born that way, no one makes them be that way. And therefore, because they're choosing to be that way, God is calling them to stop choosing that and to choose life and righteousness instead. Okay. So it doesn't matter what the sin is. And you know, they come out here, we don't, we don't pinpoint that sin, focus on that sin, and try to target that community. Okay. We're here to preach against all sin, because all sin sends people to hell. And I don't want anyone to go to hell. 
you know. So they come out, and in fact, I heard them earlier when they first got here. We we got here around 11:30, I think. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a demonstration. You wait till we see what we do. They were they were planning to cause an uproar themselves. Oh. So this happens almost every time they come here. They see us, they call each other, text each other, and they, they create a scene. And it makes it seem like it's like us versus them. But really, it's us for them. I want them to be saved. But I feel as though with um, gay people, I think there are bigger issues to focus on. For example, like kids transitioning, that's way more important to me than like, someone who's that's a That's a real disastrous I thing. Well, I, I, don't, I don't see it. one as more important than the other. All sin is important to me because all sin sends to hell. But yeah, that's irreversible. Yeah, that's okay. So, that's so destructive. Change, right? There's so many trends. It's so destructive. Body, more... So destructive. Yeah. Have you have you watched the the movie yeah. What Is a Woman? Yes, by Matt Walsh. Oh yeah, man, it's so heartbreaking. That last guy who was was a woman changed to a man. Uh, he was sitting in the seat across from him. That yeah. interview was so heartbreaking to me. It was sad. To to see these people who are just being deluded by people around them to just cut off body parts that they can never put back on. I have a friend in Australia who was with this woman for ten years. He got saved. He transition back to a man as much as he possibly could. He already had body parts cut off. Yeah. And eventually he backslid and went back to his sin. So it's a shame. But uh, it's it's a really hard thing to get over, man, because it really doesn't necessarily, it doesn't change your DNA, obviously. It doesn't really legitimately change who you are from yeah. man to woman. But it changes a lot about your life. It's very life-changing. I mean, how, how, does, how does a man who has his pride parts cut off get married and have children? We can't anymore. And that's one of the things God designed him to do. Has a woman who has her, her body parts changed have, have get pregnant and have children? Yeah. You know, it's it's a very disastrous thing. But but every sin is life changing in a bad way. No matter that's obviously irreversible to some degree. But yeah. everything is life changing in a bad way when it comes to sin. And I feel as though with um, I don't like hate trans people or not. I'm just saying that with corporations they make lifelong yeah. um, patients with the hormones like that. That's kind of like big cool. money maker. Yeah, definitely. Millions of dollars. I think it's really sad for each person. But those, those organizations that push young people to do that should be sued yeah. as much as they possibly can, man. It's just, it's, it's crazy. Um, but if someone feels like really, really sick in the head and they didn't know what else to do with themselves, I don't know how I, I think what happens a lot of times, I don't know if they brought this up in the Matt Walsh documentary or not, but people, some people feel excluded from other people. Maybe they're picked on in school or bullied, and they find some way to feel accepted in that kind of community, yeah. and they just go with it. Yeah, I feel as though with, um, Society now is more secular, and people are kind of creating their own religions with like yeah. communities like politics or transgenderism yeah. or yeah. LGBT. It's like their own religion now yeah. instead of Christianity. Sure. Okay. That's my take on it. But um, um, yeah, thanks for your time. You're welcome. I didn't get to finish our conversation. Yeah. I just wanted to close out because I'm leaving. Uh, I'm, I apologize for anyone who's disrespectful to you today. Well, you can't apologize for that. I I, I, I appreciate that. But I I don't believe what you believe. Sure. I don't agree with what you believe, but. Um, I think that everyone deserves respect, and as long as you're respecting them, I really apologize for any disrespect that you see. I've been talking to people out there, I really, I don't agree with this, mm -hmm. but that does not mean you should be disrespected and not touched, groped, like yelled at, screamed at, I don't think that's fair. Mm -hmm. Unless you're doing the same to them, that's not okay, and I don't condone it. I just wanted to say that, because I don't Yeah, I'm not doing any of those things. Um, because I don't, I also don't like people, um, especially Christians believing that, that, that all of us think that's okay. That's not okay either. Yeah. Everyone has the right to their beliefs and their views and their happiness. And I think that this is working against that, but it doesn't mean that they should work against yours. Um, and I apologize. So I'm going. It was nice to meet you. You're from the Reed? I'm sorry? From the Reed? Sure. Kerrigan. Elena. Nice to meet you, Elena. Nice to meet you. Have a good day. Yeah, sure you can. Me too. Yeah, of course you can. Thank you. I know God loves me. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. I'm, I'm guilty of a lot of those sins on the back. I, I repent. I, I mean, I, I sin sometimes. God wants to give you victory. It's hard. It's hard, man. It's hard to stop sinning sometimes. Yes. I don't agree with everything that you say, but you know, it's just okay, this is it's how it is sometimes. Can I give you something that'll encourage you in that way? Uh, what's I that? have another track that can that encourages about holiness. You had water. You've been out here a long time. Yeah, I have water. Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I have some other tracks. What's a, what? Are you guys are part of a church? Yeah, we are. What, what denomination is it? No denomination. Oh, no, uh, non-denomination. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually in the process of converting to, um, what's it called, uh, Greek Orthodox, actually. Okay. Okay. 
What's led you to do that? Um, well, actually, my uh, I originally was I was raised a Methodist. Okay. And my mother uh, married a uh, married a, uh, a a Greek man who was uh, well remarried to a Greek okay. man who was uh, uh, Greek Orthodox, and I've been going to their services just to I just like to check out everything, and I've been enjoying it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would encourage you just to read the Bible. I read it. Believe what it says and obey it and I follow it. I believe what it says. I try my best, but, you know. But God has victory available for you, man. You don't have to, you don't have to be a sinner. The Lord died for us. I love him every day. I pray for him. He saves me. I do what I can. Yeah. I appreciate you all coming out here. Even if I don't believe what you guys believe. Thank you. Amen. Bless you. Those are my friends and brothers in Christ. Yes, ma'am. Do you think the signs might be a little bit I would say misleading, but kind of like not enough. They shit out my face. I don't run that down. So I have a question for you. Why am I going to hell because I'm Asian? Why? Well, I answered your friend earlier. You heard what I said. No. Hey, you did. No. I think that's something what I heard. What were you going to say, young lady? I was saying, I feel like the signs, with matters that are as serious as this, I feel like you can't just do it on the sign. Why is that? Because it gives a lot of well, their reaction doesn't determine whether what I'm doing is legitimate or good or not. I mean, for example, Jesus said the whole world hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. So should he stop testifying of their evil works because they hate him? No. Okay, so I'm not going to stop putting the truth on the sign because people hate it. I think what the difference with that is that... It's the, it's what people, the message that they are getting. Jesus didn't have a sign to say, like, simply, if you do this, you're going to help. He, he elaborated and said, Well, the Word of God teaches you the very thing. So, I mean, I have no problem with the Word of God being on a sign. Well, so, I, so I, I, I think that I think the issue is that the way people are responding is they've been deceived on what love is, on what hate is, and they misdefine those things. They think I'm hateful and they're loving and they're sexual perversion when they're not. I think it's I'm the actually one being loved and you're actually one being hateful. The sign itself, the use, so, for example, when I saw the sign, I saw it as some, you know, being kind of hateful and saying, and hypocritical saying, if you're a liar, you're going to hell, right? Mm -hmm. But everyone lies. I don't lie. That's a lie, right there. Why, how do you know that? Because everyone lies. No, how do you know that? Are you God? No, but it's just part of our sinful human nature. That's not true. That's not true. The, Bi the Bible says every liar shall have his part in the lake of fire. So, so the Bible says every liar shall have his part in the lake of fire. No liar is going to be a Christian. I've lied before. No, I'm not talking about in the past. I'm talking about in the past. So I'm talking about presently. I'm not lying in the present. No, I say as me personally. I lie in the present. Well, I don't though. Because I am, because that's part of my sinful no, nature. I, I live a holy life. I obey God. It's impossible to live a completely holy life. That's why we that's not true. need Jesus. And that's why we are constantly being made new. And we have to take up our cross daily. Because we can't live a perfect life. How are you How are you taking up your cross daily for sinning daily? It's not, because that's not, have you read in the, where Paul says that if I, I do the things I don't want to do. That, that's Paul before he goes converted. No, yeah. no, that's when he was converted. No, that's not true. No, that's no, true. If you read Romans 6 and Romans 8, which come right before that and right after that, there's no way. Because Romans 6 comes before 8, can I, can I finish? Kind of can I finish? So if, if you read Romans 6 and 8, which come before and after that, you'll see there's no way your interpretation of Romans 7 could be accurate. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so, so yeah. So, so the Bible teaches us to be holy. And the Bible says, if you love Jesus, you'll obey Jesus. Are you being holy right like, now? Okay, so I love my parents, and I obey my parents, but every now and then I trip up and I make mistakes. Every now and then or every day? It's just every now and then. But okay, that's so why are you sin against God every day then? What? I'm not saying I sin against God every day. Oh, uh, so you said a second ago. I say I always say that doesn't, it's like maybe someday I might do better than another. Do you know where Brother Paul is? No, I'm not sure. One. What I'm saying is that in general, though, it's just that... Oh, right there, bro. You, bro, right ahead. You can't put a whole sermon and a whole conversation into one sign. 
because that immediately invites hostility towards you. So you just gave me a law of something I can't do. I didn't say I can't, I'm saying logically. If you want to have, if you want to bring people to Christ, I don't you can't think use a sign. Okay, well, I think you're wrong. The Bible that's not, what's that? I'm, I think that's fine, but I just. Okay. The Bible doesn't teach me I can't have the, his word on the sign. Like this, this gospel track doesn't have the whole word of God on it. No, God. It's like, there's no so I can hand right it out. Wrong method, but there are ways are easier and make it and people more respectful. No, I don't. I don't think that's true. I, th I think the reason people respond the way they do is for the arity hate the truth in their hearts whether they claim to be christian or not they hate the i'm not talking to you they hate the truth of god's word and that's that's, a, that's well, their feelings mean nothing the truth doesn't matter can i say that it doesn't matter how you feel that's right it doesn't matter how i feel the word of god matters you have to balance grace and truth grace has nothing to do with feelings grace has nothing to do with feelings you have to balance the two. You're, right now, the, what I'm saying is you're presenting truth only. You're not presenting the uh, truth and the love and the truth. It's not true. It's right there. That's true, right? That's the grace. That's how they can be saved. But the way you're making it sound like you have you know to what, You know what I think? I, I think really what it comes down is you just fear man. What? You fear man. Well, of course, man is like fallen. God tells you how to fear man. You fear man. Let me, let me ask you a question. You say the word of God is false. What if my God is not your God? Your God's false. I could say the same here. Sure, you could. Wouldn't be true, but you could say that. Prove me wrong. Prove you wrong on what? Prove to me that your God is real versus my God. Who's your God? Odin, the Alpha. Yeah. All right. So, what is your religion to teach? I'm not real familiar with paganism in that sense. I'm talking to some Odinites or whatever you want to call them in the past. They're few and far between. And so, but what do you believe? I believe that the entire Norse. Yeah, I believe the entire Norse and beyond is truly real. I believe the All Father protects us all. I believe Thor believes in the God. I worship all the gods. I ask for their prayers constantly. They help me figure out who I am. And they help you what? They help me figure out who I am. Forget who you are. They help me figure out. Figure out. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. There's all this noise. Sorry. I understand. Also, their teachings don't touch on this level of morality because Norse mythology really strives for battle and glory, and no one cares what's in your pants when you're wielding a sword and a shield. So. Okay. That's why I chose to follow into Odin's footsteps. No, so I, now I understand why you chose Odin, because you basically have chosen a god that lets you be the sinner you want to be, and you can still be worshiping God. So people do it all the time. They, they, they think religion is a buffet. They go to the buffet and choose the things they want out of it. And I'll, I'll, I'll make a God in my own image, according to my likeness, who suits my sins, doesn't condemn me for my sins. But it is, it is that. But I, I, but, window shop your religion. Okay, so that's what you've done. I'm, I'm glad you're willing to admit that. So the God of the Bible is not going to bend to what you like and what I like. He's going to give you the truth because he loves you. And he wants you to know the truth, the truth that you're free from your sin. Your sin is going to cost you your soul in the end. That's why he tells you to repent of your sins. See, when I, when I, when I became a Christian, I was a wicked devil. Fornicator, drunkard, liar, thief. I mean, I was all kinds of sins I was involved in. And God told me to stop those things. So I didn't come to him because I wanted to keep on doing certain things and him be okay with them. I came to him because he was the truth. And the truth is valuable. And so you don't go shopping for a God. You find out who the true God is, and then you follow him. Let me it's only put this in a different picture. So, I, more outside of Norse paganism, I believe that there are so many religions in this world and so many different ideologies of who God or what God is. What if, instead of just one of them being real, all of them? And depending on the religion and the way you worship your gods determines no heaven or hell. So no, so no heaven or hell is false 
but all are real. I mean, depending on who you worship, yeah. you go to that specific heaven or hell. It's, it's very convenient and yeah, vague, but it's not reality. I mean, so is God. I, well, we no, 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 you're a God, it, not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible says he's the only God. So that, that would contradict that. The God of Islam says he's the only God, right? And so all these Mormonism are the same thing. Jehovah Witnesses said the same thing. So you cannot, it's, it's impossible, logically speaking, to do that because they all contradict each other. No, 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 you're forgetting two words. God is the only God in Christianity. No, period. That's not what it says in the Bible. It is exactly what it says in the Bible. Absolutely not. That there is no God before me and there is none after me. It's the book of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah still did. And Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way. Not one of the ways. The way. I am the truth. Not one of the truths. The truth. I am the light. Not one of the lights. The light. No man comes to the Father, God, but by me. So you try to make a different way to come to God. And God says, no, that's the wrong way. He said, but I want this way. I want to keep my sin. God says, no, you're guilty of sin. So you, I mean, you're making your choices. You're going to the buffet table of religion and saying, I want this, 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 and this, and kind of made a God to suit yourself. And it feels convenient for you now. But if you end up in hell, it's not going to be convenient then, man. When you stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ, who the Father has committed all judgment to, you would have wished you would have chosen differently. And that's why I'm here to, 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 to tell you the truth. Do you want me to tell you the story of when I stopped being Christian? You can tell me, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> when I was in Bible school, and I was like really young, right? You mean like a Christian high school? No, 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 this was like church Sunday school. Okay, okay. It's like, like vacation Bible school, VBS. Kind of, yeah. Okay. It wasn't during vacation Bible school, but same thing. Okay, sure. We were discussing the story of Adam and Eve. And we were... It was a little above our time, but we were, we were reading Paradise Lost. So this was... In church? Yeah, put it online wow. now, huh? Can you? What kind of church was this? It was a Presbyterian. Uh... Different perspectives. So this was no, like, I understand, but I mean, if, if you're going to be in a Bible class, the book should be the Bible. No, we still not not, 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 not Paradise Lost. But go I ahead, understand. go ahead. Sorry. But Paradise Lost is also the fall of man from Satan. Say again. Paradise Lost is about the fall of man from Satan's point of view. Well, it's so called. So same actions, same events, different perspectives. Yeah, but it's not, it's not based on God's word. So I'm saying. Yeah, I understand. But so God made me obviously we know Satan tricked Eve into partaking of the freedom of marriage. Just saved her, yep. Yep. So that wait, 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 which tree again? Say that one more time. Which tree does she eat from? The tree of marriage. No, it's a good needle, yeah. There you go. Um, I thought you said the tree of life for a second there. I was like, no. No, 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 no. The tree of life. No, it's a different okay. tree. Okay, okay. Um, uh, but that was her individual choice, and obviously Adam of followed suit out of love. Yeah, that's his choice too. Correct. But then they were kicked out of paradise. Garden of Eden, yeah. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Yeah. The greatest place on, on all of earth, yeah. where there was no work, the fruit grew plentifully, there was no shame in bodies. Yeah. It was perfect. It was an absolute paradise. Yeah. They were kicked out for decisions they made. And all of us were denied entry into that same paradise because of one person's actions. Okay. Why should I fall behind the mother of earth, which God does refer to Eve as the mother of earth? Why should I follow in her footsteps with her mistake? Doomed for the rest of mankind. Okay, so we're not doomed because of her sin or Adam's sin. Okay, I understand what you're saying about not being in the Garden of Eden, but my question for you is have you sinned? Of course I've sinned. So you, I don't know a single person who has not sinned. So that, that's my point. So you, you'd have hit that too. So that, that's, it's really a moot point to say why I'm not allowed, allowed in there when you'd have been immediately kicked right back out. Okay, so that, that's one thing I would say. But you're not you're not held accountable for her sin. God, God is not, you're not born a sinner. You're, God, you're not judged as a sinner because of Adam and Eve's sin. You're judged as a sinner because of your own choices, not their choices. So, so when it comes to like the sins of others, there are some natural consequences for that. Like if, if your parents, if your dad was a drunkard and your mom was a prostitute, there'd be some natural consequences for you because of that. 
but it doesn't mean that God's holding you accountable for being a drunkard and a prostitute. I think, I think we're missing my point. Here. Okay, I'm trying to get your point, but I... No, 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 I get it, I get yeah, it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to explain that a little bit better. Eve was the one. So Adam and Eve started inside the gates. Yeah, I understand that. All of us were forced to start outside of the gate. Well, I mean, kind of by necessity, like I was saying, there isn't, there is, there's some consequences for that because if they're outside the gate, she can't go back into the Aiken gate and give birth to Cain and Abel, for example. Okay, and, and, and when Cain and Abel are born, they're born as what? Babies. Who's going to take care of them? Their parents. Their parents are outside the gate. Okay, so it's not as if we don't have a world we're living in right now that we can't follow Jesus and be, be obedient to God. And God does promise access to the tree of life in the new paradise. I understand that. And so, so if you really want to be in that place, you do have an option, right? Because if you were put in that place in the first place, once again, you would have got to die anyway because you would have sinned eventually. But God is offering you a place in his paradise. The new Jerusalem is what it's called in Revelation. If you'll forsake your sins, turn in childlike humble faith to him and obey him the rest of your days, he gives you that option. And that paradise is permanent. You'll never be kicked out of it again. And so you're, you're kind of complaining because you don't have that first option, but God has actually given you a better option. And you're refusing that. So I, I kind of find you're complaining a little bit hypocritical. But May, because, because he's giving you an option that's even better and you're refusing it. So here's my other point about that new paradise. In order for that new paradise to be free of sin, the option of free will has to be removed. Not true. I disagree. Okay, so let me explain to you why it's not true. Okay, so Christians are given free will on this earth. Temptation and wickedness all around us. Every day. We're supposed to live holy right now. And so if we can live holy right now in this place that God calls us to, then we get to the place where there's no temptation and no sin, of course we can live holy with our free will. See, so this, this place is kind of like a proving ground of sorts. I also have fought with that, because if that's the case, with there is no sin, let's go back to the very beginning when God made the angels and Lucifer invented the first sin. Yeah, I mean, you can say an event, he just chose, he was prideful, he wanted to be God. But take the angels, for example. All the angels have free will, right? From the beginning. What percentage of them fell? One third. What percentage have been holy from the beginning every single moment? Two thirds. There you go. So that's my point. So you, we can do the same thing, but we have to submit to Jesus Christ, and he will change us from the inside out, and then we can live a holy life the rest of our days. I understand that, yeah. but saying that there is a place where there is no sin seems also hypocritical. No. Due to the same point that originally before Lucifer, that place had no sin. It still does. The place where God resides has no sin. There's two-thirds angels there who've never sinned. But so so just, like, just like those angels can resist temptation from Satan himself and not follow him, we can resist temptation to obey, to obey the devil and bad temptation right now with God's help. And then for all eternity, we can live with God and never give it temptation again. No, we need temptation. Sorry. No, we won't be any temptation. Yeah, but again, before the first third of the angels fell, there was no sin in all the angels. Sure, there's, there's, there's always an opportunity to, 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 to do those things on this earth, but when it comes to eternity, once again, we've walked through the fire as followers of Jesus Christ. We've proven that we're not going to give in here and now. Therefore, we are going to do it there when there's no temptation. So it's a better situation there. So you're saying that if we can prove ourselves here, the likelihood of temptation will be minuscule up there. No, there is no temptation up there at all. That's my point. And so this is like a proving grounds of sore. And in fact, Jesus said, unless you endure to the end, you will not be saved. Because it persevered to the end through temptation. And the Bible says, blessed is the man who endures temptation, that when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? Were you done? 
Not really, but they've been waiting a long time. Okay, go ahead. Um, do you think this changes anyone's mind? Well, the Bible. I'm going to tell you, I believe the gospel, oh, okay. and I don't think it this is. And he's walking this You have a question and won't listen to the answer, I'm not going to talk to you. Are you listening for the answer? Are you going to be argumentative and combative? Are you going to be argumentative and combative or are you going to listen for the answer? I'm going to defend my points, yes. Oh. You can't no, wait a minute. Why are you walking away? I have a respectful question for you. I just, I want to know. You haven't been respectful the whole time, so I really seriously doubt that. I really seriously doubt that. Okay, no, I promise I'm being respectful. I've been waiting for five minutes. I just have to ask you something. Why are you here? Instead of at prisons, like talking to rapists, why are you talking to college students instead of rapists and murderers? Someone say you don't love your wife. So, so if you if you're gonna listen if you're listening for the answer, I'm coming in peace. Are you gonna listen for the answer? Um, yes. Jesus yes, yes, he is. We also no, I'm asking, if you're going to ask me questions, you have I'm to... A, I'm asking questions because I want to understand your viewpoint. Okay, but you have to, I mean, what I'm asking you is, are you going to listen for the answer? Bro, am I going to seek the answer? Like, you say, am I going to seek the answer? What does that mean to you? What yeah, mean? we can talk, we can talk. So where, where do you ask them? Huh? Where do you, where do you ask them? What did you, what did you say? You say, am I, am I going to hear the truth? Is that what you said? No. Okay, what, I'm, that's what I'm My question was, are you going to listen for the answer? When I'm you no, ask me a no, question. I'm, oh, no, no, no. You, like, you speak, I speak, go back. Yeah, no, for okay. sure. It's a dialogue. All right, go ahead. A, so I, no, I just want to, so where do you, what is your, what is your stance? Where, like, where? The Bible. Okay, the Bible. Okay. So do you believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh? Of course. In the human body? Yes. So how, how would you, how would you? Are you a Muslim? No, no, no. Okay. I'm a believer. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay. Do you believe it came in the flesh? Of course. Okay, all right. I definitely believe you. I want to make sure. I definitely think, you know, I believe he came in the flesh and walked just as we walk, right? Um, but, like, what do you think? Well, he never sinned, though, right? He did. Okay. Jesus never sinned. He came, he, he, he's perfect. He's an example, you know? I think Jesus, God, is love, honestly. Do you, do you think that? First John 4 says God is love. Yeah, so whatever God does is loving. So if you want to define love, we don't define it outside the scriptures and try to impose that upon God when he says he's love. We find out what love is from the scriptures. Right, we so look at what God did, mm -hmm. what his characteristics are, what Jesus did. things he said. No, what God did too. The in the Old Testament, what God did, but from the Old Testament was the old way, but we live in the New Testament, which is through Jesus. Well, no doubt that Christians are obedient to the Old Covenant, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. Exactly. And so Jesus is the perfect representation of the Father. So when Jesus came, the Father didn't change. That's right, but the only way to God is through Jesus, right? Of course, John so 14, build, 6. So we build a relationship through Jesus in order to experience right. God. So not saying, not saying God is not important, not saying that we, we don't live by the commandments, but we really, it's through Jesus, right? We, like, would, you, would you agree with what I'm saying? Yeah, I appreciate Jesus, that's right. So uh, if, if, if God is love, if Jesus lived a life that was, you know, he was in the mix, you know, he told us to go out and make more disciples. He told us to go and make many disciples among the nations, you know what I'm saying? But he did it out of love. And I just feel like, I don't, what y'all are saying, do I agree with you? I do agree with you. I, I, think, I think you guys are right. However, it's the way that y'all are going about it. I think, you know, I just feel like it's not out of love. Because I can not agree with something. I cannot agree with somebody's lifestyle, but I still love them just for who they are because God Jesus did the same for me. I'm on the, I'm on you can be a right sinner, now. you can be you can smoke weed, you can be a homosexual, you can be a compulsive masturbator, bro. You can literally fornicate, you can do all that stuff, but at the end of the day, the thing that's missing on you guys' is signs that I really do not see is I see the gospel obey Jesus. Which obey obey is to obey something literally is kind of like do it. Do this. Obey Jesus. Follow Jesus. But at the end of the day, it's like, where's the repentance? From here? Where is it? Where? It says right on it. it. Says stop sinning. Where does it say? That's that's that. But that's a that's a that's, that's repentance. A forcing, that's a forcing command. Stop sinning. I can't say stop sinning. We're going to hell. That's what Jesus said. Did he? Yeah. Or did he? Or was Jesus love though? He did everything out of love. Okay, but you see, we, we, see we talked one? about this at the beginning. Can, so. I, can I give you an example? I'd like to respond to some things you said, actually. You talked for quite a while now. But I, but so so I, I like, I like you, to be able to respond to some of those things. We, I, but I wasn't done. Remember, at the beginning, we it, talked about dialogue. No, for sure, for so sure. You can't but, go on forever and not let me but respond I did, to anything. I know, but this last thing is going to, that's that's the end of my dialogue. Then, just an example, you know, 
the Samaritan woman, right? Her, she talked to Jesus at the well, and she was saying how, what she told Jesus, Jesus said, basically, I can't even yeah, hear you. Have, I can't even right? hear you, man. I, it's fine. Basically, Jesus didn't condemn her, and she was a Samaritan. Jesus was a Jew, correct? Right, so Jews and Samaritans weren't supposed to talk to each other. So the fact that Jesus was talking to her, you know, and what did he say? He said, go and sin no more. Because she didn't live, she didn't have a husband. She had many husbands, right? But Jesus didn't condemn her. So the point of me saying all of that is at the end of the day, yes, I, you could condemn somebody out of love. You don't have to agree with their lifestyle, but me forcing you to stop sinning, that's not gonna work because you are you have your own viewpoint. So I can't force you to do anything, but I can open it, I can hear what you're saying, I can give you the dialogue, but I'm gonna give you the truth. If I say, hey, I feel like this is who Jesus is, he's love, and at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, what you're doing, it's not right. But Jesus literally died for your sins. He can, he can literally forgive you for that. You know what I'm saying? All I'm gonna do is give you that truth, but I'm gonna do it out of love. And I just feel like what y'all doing is not out of love. Like, that's just, that's just my viewpoint. But what you were saying, whatever you want to say. Okay, so to say that I'm not doing it out of love is to judge my motives and my intentions. You don't know my motives. You don't know my intentions. What I'm doing is love because I'm giving them the truth of God's word, the bad news and the good news. And um, I'm, I can't force anyone to not sin. But like you said, I declare the message of God unto them, and they choose of their own free will whether to obey that or not. But if this, but I feel like in you oh, doing this, this it. is turning people away because you're coming from a judgmental standpoint. So if somebody's being judged on what they're doing, it's like, yes, you're bringing it to the light, for sure. But are you bringing it to the light for them to, for you to hear their, their viewpoints on why they're this way? Do you believe that people can be born again? Absolutely not. Why not? Because the Bible says so. <laughs> but the Bible says that we are born into sin and formed in our iniquity. No, we're not born into sin. <laughs> How? We're born innocent children. We choose to be sinners. How? How does a baby, does a baby know how to walk when they first come out? No. Exactly. They so don't know how to sin either. But if they a baby has to is. develop and learn how to walk, how do we sin? That's just, we talk about the spiritual and we talk about the physical. Babies aren't sinners. Babies aren't sinners. Toddlers aren't sinners. But we were born into sin and formed no. in our iniquity. No. How? You don't believe that? No, I don't believe that. The Bible, what am I saying? I'm, I'm responding to him right now. So right, so when it comes to how we're born, we're born innocent. We're not born pure. We're not born ungodly. We're born innocent. Because, because we don't have knowledge of good and evil yet. So we haven't made any good or evil choices. But, so when he, hold on. Remember, you still for a long time. So, so the Bible says in James 4, 17, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So there has to be a knowledge, an understanding of right and wrong to be considered as a sinner. So baby, accountability, correct? Yeah, that's right. So babies and toddlers, I, I, mean, I have children myself. I've, I've seen them grow up. I, I, I can see their development. Some of them come to an earlier age of accountability than others because they, they develop quicker. But my point is babies are not sinners. So no one's born a sinner in any way, not any kind of sin. They choose to sin later on. There's influence in their life, whether bad or good, to, to lead them in that direction, and they eventually choose to sin. And But then they must choose to repent of that sin, turn to Jesus Christ in childlike, humble faith, become born again, and then obey him the rest of the days. But God commands them to do it. I hear you, and I agree partially with what you're saying. I feel like you can be, because we're born into sin. I, I'll give you an example, right? So, born into sin is sin. Would you agree every anything that, that is not according to God's will, would you, would you agree that that's sin? Sin is transgression of God's law. Sin, anything can be sin. Not anything can be sin. What, what's not? What's not? Oh, well, there's a lot of things that are amoral, like playing basketball is amoral, right? It's just a game. Playing a board game is amoral. There's some things you can do that are not sinful or righteous. You understand? It's, it's the intents of your heart, the motives of your heart that makes them good or evil. So not any. Well, breathing is not a sin. For sure. No, eating, drinking, for sure. Water is not a sin. But fornication is a sin. Of course it is. Having sex is a sin. Yeah. Well, outside of marriage, it's outside sin. of marriage is a sin. Okay. Sex inside of marriage is good. God, God made it for that. But for sure, you know, lying, that's a sin. Yep. Stealing, Idolatry, that's lust, a sin. covetousness, All murder, is a sin, hatred. Right? So, yeah. and, so that's what sin is. We can both agree that. Right? Yeah. Sin is trying to get some God's law. Well. right? Okay. So let's say if you have somebody that is a homosexual, right? They were molested when they were younger. As a kid, yeah. So you say that happens a lot of times. So you say that as a kid, kids don't, you don't have the knowledge of 
you don't have the knowledge of that, but you grow up to be homosexual, right? The reason why I'm saying I believe you can be born gay because you're, that's your iniquity. That's what you're formed in. And if we are born into sin, as a whole, we were born sinners. We wasn't born knowing to be right. Granted, you had to develop to learn what was wrong and right. Just like a baby has to develop whether they, they can walk or not, they have to develop that. So I believe that you literally have to develop, you have to develop what to be, what is wrong, what is right. A baby doesn't know that if they hit somebody, they don't know that that's wrong until you teach them. So no, I know it's so, wrong. So I know it's wrong. How? It's a baby. You just, you literally say that a, ba like a baby does not. Oh, you said a baby? A baby, okay, yes. Okay, yeah. A baby, yeah. Right. Like, yeah. You're right. Like, They're talking about a kid. Like, so I feel like a baby, like, we're born into sin, but at the end of the day, we're formed in our iniquity. So all of these sins that we struggle with, homosexuality, masturbation, all the stuff, that's, that's we're formed in our iniquity. So yes, we can struggle, we struggle with that. But do we have to stay there? No, because we can be forgiven. That's where the repentance comes in. You know what I'm saying? And then, like you said, we choose to live our, we, we live our life according to the, the example that Jesus set. You see what I'm saying? So that's all, that's all I'm saying. I, that's all I'm saying. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I, I agree to disagree because I feel like if I was to be out here, I would be doing it. I, I gotta move, man. It's good. It, it's good. It's good. We can come out here. I just feel like. It's over here a little more. I just feel like if I was if I was to be out here, I would be trying to understand each. I would I would be out here to try to understand because we don't. I don't know how many people out here. I know a couple people. I don't know everybody out here, so I can't come out here and say your lifestyle your lifestyle is wrong. Because if I come out here and say your lifestyle is wrong, how do I know this man? But if it is wrong, if, if it is wrong, me having this conversation and getting to know him as a person to understand why did how did he get to that point. I want to know who he is before I sit up here and say, I hate you. You're, you're going to hell. Not even that I hate you, because you're probably not even saying that. I would never say that. But exactly. But for me to come out here and tell this man that I do not know, I don't even know his background, how can I come to him and say, you're wrong for doing what you're doing? Because he may not understand what he's doing is wrong. So me, the being of the spirit, out of love, I'm going to come and understand him, out who he is, out of love. That's what Jesus did. Jesus was in the mix. He wasn't just out here watching people seeing he was he was he was in the midst of it when he went into the to, into the temple and flipped the tables because they were literally gambling over it they was literally doing dirt to to god's word they was literally taxing people for stuff that they shouldn't have been taxing for jesus went in there and flipped the table and he told them to get out of there but he was in the midst of actually actually with them he was with the sinners he wasn't he wasn't just condemning them for what for what they did he loved them for what they did so i just feel like what Cool. The message that you guys think that y'all are preaching, okay, we get it. But at the end of the day, this is a college campus. Everybody doesn't have the same mindset to say, hey, you know what? That's wrong. You know, that is wrong. Because how do they know? Because if this is all that they know and we, to be of the spirit, we, we know the truth. So we have to give them the truth, but we have to give it out of love because that's what God is. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what you say your name was? Kerrigan. Kerrigan? Kayla, man. It's good to meet you. Right, good to have a conversation with you, man. My one question is, why film it? Why are you filming? Oh, there's lots of reasons to film. Um, one, I check myself later on to make sure what I was doing was right and biblical and godly. So and, you don't uh, upload it anywhere, right? Well, you let me finish. So there's lots of reasons why. Also, for protection, it's an objective witness for what's going on at the event. So I'm exposed accusations or police that are unlawful, do things that are wrong. It's objective witness of that. I also upload it later on, usually. Uh, for the edification of others, for our ability to hear the truth. Yeah. So, are you going based off rules, or are you going based off like what do you? Mean? What do you, do you mean? Sit by? back. Do you go back and watch this and say, all of this is wrong. This is all they did. Yep, wrong. Like, do you go based off of a rule, or do you kind of go based off? What is your relationship like? With this? Abiding. So abiding. Is Intimate. Like, so do you do you have like a, a good Christian card? Like, if you sin today, do you be like, oh man, I sin. And you like make a list of it. Not, not, and I'm not being funny. I'm actually like asking, like, you, is it like? If I sin, I repent immediately. Immediately. Yeah. So you, confess it and forsake it immediately. Cause I don't want to. Like I don't want to walk. Well, I don't sin that often. So I mean, how? I, I walk in the spirit. I walk, walk in the strength. The I walk in the strength but of that Jesus Christ. That doesn't. That doesn't say that you're not. You're never tempted. Temptation is not a sin. Temptation. It's not a sin. It's not a sin. The a acting upon the temptation is sin. Okay, That's yeah, right. For, for sure. Yeah. But I'm saying is, are we not all tempted? Though? Sure. So are you not tempted? Yes. So because you are tempted, we're all tempted. That doesn't exclude you from sin. Nobody, we're, we're sinners. We're not now. Speak for yourself. I'm not, I'm not a sinner. You, you're, you're, actually, you're actually correct. I'm not a sinner. I do fall short sometimes. I'm not perfect. 
there's a lot of things that me being in college, being young, it's hard. It's hard living for God in college. You got all of these things that's going around, around, you're going to get closer to God, you're going to get further away. But that doesn't exclude me from, that doesn't mean God doesn't love me. He loves me just as much as he loves me. He loves me. He literally loves everybody just as much. But the point is, with my sin, sometimes, I'm not going to lie, sometimes it takes me a couple days to repent. Is that right? No. But it's because I feel so ashamed that my sin that I've done, that it's hard for me to come back to. But because I know Jesus lives in my heart, I can't stay away for too long. And I come to him, right? But like that doesn't exclude me from sin. Am I going to fall into temptation? No, I don't have to. I can choose it. And you're right. Like, the more that you live by the Spirit, the more that you're going to not have the desire to sin. However, at the end of the day, that doesn't ex exclude us from sin. We're not Jesus. Jesus is the only human that's perfect. We're not. We, we make mistakes. Regardless of the things that you think are sin, the things that you think that are sin, at the end of the day, we were born into sin. So it was, it's literally in our nature to sin. But when you have the spirit, then that's when you begin to choose and live a life that's according to God's word. But at the end of the day, we all are tempted. We all fall short of God's glory. So if you saying that you don't fall short of, God, short of God's glory, how? Because we all do. We're human. Jesus is the only perfect one. We're not perfect. Did you wake up and pray to God this morning? Did you eat swine today? Or did you did you do anything that was not according to God's word? No. Walk me through your day. I'm not here for you to be my judge, man. No, I'm not. I'm not oh, I'm not judging you. I'm just. I'm Sound just, like you want to. I don't want to judge you. I can't. I can't judge you. Sound like you want to. No, bro. I love you. <laughs> like I literally love you, bro. Like, I, well, I, judging is not a lack of love. I didn't judging it, this. Me coming out here telling people that y'all are going to hell for not doing what God said. Is that That's true? Not love. Is that true? Is it true? Yeah. Does God say that? If they, does if God, they don't change their ways. Does God say that? If they don't change their ways, yes. But it's a way that you say that. Is, does God say that? Does God say? That if they don't repent, they're gonna go to hell. Yes. Is God love? Yes. Then is it loving to say that? No, it's not the way that you're, you're saying. You're confused, man. How? You're confused. It's the way that you're saying. You're confused. I can sit up here and say, "Hey, man, how do you explain to me your lifestyle?" And they explained to me their whole life story that when they was one years old, when they were five years old, this happened to them, this happened to them. And this, you know, in middle school, this would happen to them. And they were confused. They didn't know. They didn't have nobody. Their parents shunned them out. They didn't help them and tell them what was going on. So they had to figure it out on their own. So as they were young, they grow up thinking that this one thing is right. But they've never encountered somebody that loved them because every Christian who says they're a Christian condemns and they don't, they don't love. And that's the problem with Christianity. This is a, this is a relationship. This is literally a relationship. I'm a believer. I love Jesus. Jesus loves me. He loves everybody out here. But I'm not going to condemn somebody because I don't know them. But I'm going to come out of love. God is literally love. So, yes, it, to condemn them, and did God say, if you are all these sins, are you going to hell? Yes. If you don't repent of your sins, yes. But the thing is, out of love, I'm going to tell them the truth. Like, that's 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 just the bottom line of it. Like, so I just feel like, yeah, bro, I don't, I don't know. I get what you're saying, but it just doesn't... I don't know, man. It's, it's just a, it's just weird. You're confused, man. How? Because what you're saying is not according to God's word. You say one thing, it's because of the side of your mouth. It's like... You speak on one side of your mouth, speak on the other side of your mouth. How? Okay, I'll, I'll walk you through it again. God is love, right? God is love. That's, God is God's not love? God is love. Okay, okay, okay. So let's let's walk through it again. Okay. God is love. Let's walk. Does God say these things? In his word, he does. Okay. Can I say these things? Can you? Yeah. Your other spirit, right? Can I say the things that God says? Your other spirit, right? Yes. Can I say the things that God says? If you're of the spirit, you understand what these are, and you understand that yes, you can because you you, you can give the okay, truth. Let's, to let's, not, let's not go on a rabbit trail. It's, so, it's, so, it's all on. If God is love, and God says these things, okay. and I repeat what God has already said. Wait. Hey, hold on, hold on. See, you, you go off on rabbit trails, man, left ahead, and right. Go you go don't ahead, even let me ahead. talk. And if, if, if I say this to anything that God says, okay. it doesn't mean I lack love for anybody. How? You're judging them. God, well, God, I'm telling them what God says, and you're that's judging, judging them. them. So telling them what God says is judging them? No, no, no. The way that you're saying it, you're judging them. You're not giving them the opportunity to explain themselves. You're not giving them the... You're not, you're where does, not where does, the, where does the Bible person? say that I need to know someone intimately or let them explain their whole life story before I can tell them the truth? So how can you... Can what? you give me a Bible verse for that? What? Can you give me a Bible verse for that? I don't need to give you a Bible verse. Because there is none. No, no, no. There is none. I'm not giving you a Bible verse. Jesus didn't, didn't do that. that. John the Baptist didn't do that. All the apostles didn't do that. The Old Testament prophets so didn't Paul do that. Not, when Paul was writing, was he not coming out of love? Paul was writing to churches. He's not writing to unbelievers. But Paul went to, uh, so to, to preach to unbelievers. Thought, he didn't go to Athens and say, okay. oh, let me get to know every single one of you individually first, and then I'll tell you the truth in Acts Whether 17. Whether they're Jew or Gentile, barbaric, slave or free, Christ is all that matters, right? 
I don't understand the, the, the point of what you're saying. We were on a point that I can tell people the truth without knowing them intimately, without having a conversation with them first. That's what the Apostle Paul did. It's what all the Apostles did. It's what Jesus did, what John the Baptist did, what all the Old Testament prophets did. So you're holding me to some standard, not based upon God's Word, not based upon the example we see in God's Word of other preachers. It's some example, some, some, some standard you've held for yourself. It's legalism is what it is. I have a question. It's pharisaicalism. Anything I say today, would, if I was to say, break this down to you exactly how I do it, would you have heard me more and wanted to change your ways if this is how you live? Or would you would have heard me as a person and would have been more open to hearing what I'm saying than the way that he's doing it? Yes, yeah, yeah. Because you're hey, hey, exactly. their, their, their agreement or not means nothing. You're harping it down. Their, their agreement or not means nothing. Well, what matters is what God says, not what they say. Not what you say. It does. It does. Yes, you're right. Well, then, then, stop, then, stop, then stop appealing to them. I'm to not get, appealing to them. You just I'm did. Giving, I'm, I just gave them the truth. You literally, heard, you literally, you literally just, like you just, just the appeal the to them to see if what you're doing is right. I literally do. I literally you just said, it, if, if, I, if you do the way I do it, would you hear me better? That's what you just did. Literally, you're not appealing to God. You're appealing to them. Everything you're appealing to sinners. You're not appealing to God. How? You just did. How? Why? Because the point so is... So you did do it. No, 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 no. The point yeah. is, I'm trying to get you to understand that there's a way that you do something. There's I don't think order. you understand. There's an order. I think you're confused. Time. You're confused. We, that we don't know. I, you're confused. Know what time is judgment? I have classes, so <laughs> I, have to make it, I have to put this on my calendar so I know. Otherwise, right. I won't be able to attend. Tell them the truth, man. I... Go ahead, tell them the truth. Yeah, man. Yeah, judgment yeah. as in what? Like, I don't know. I, that's why I'm asking. Oh, you're coming because he's judging you. No, no. I just need to know what time judgment is. Like, court dates? What time of judge, judgment is? So, so since, you're, since you're the expert, why don't you go ahead and tell me? I didn't say I was an expert. Or you're telling me how to do it. I know. Judgment Day's been coming for the past few hundred years, but it hasn't been. Well, actually, bro, I disagree with Is it like okay. one of those I got a Bible verse that responds to that exact objection. It's found in 2 Peter chapter 3. The Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repent. So you, you see, God has not come. He's been talking about it for hundreds of years. You say, Well, he's not going to come. God is that come because he wants you to repent not That's because he's slack good, yeah. not because he's indifferent not because he's lazy because he wants you to, he's giving you a chance to repent and using a chance to keep on sinning he's giving you a chance to repent that's why he hasn't come back yet well the bible says that atheist is a fool the fool says in heart there's no god so what's wrong with me having I just literally said the exact opposite. I literally just said the exact opposite. Then why would you ask me that question if you just heard me? Why would you ask me that question? Sir, do you want Jesus to come? I haven't talked very much, actually. Okay, I'm going to ask you one question. You just finished that sentence saying that's why he hasn't come back yet, but you don't know when he's coming back? I didn't say I knew when he was coming back. All, all I told you was what 2 Peter 3, 9 says, is the reason why Jesus Christ has not returned yet, because he's being patient with sinners. He wants sinners to come to repentance. And when he comes back, they're going to be judged. Okay, so his, they're, they're saying they're mocking the judgment of God, the return of Jesus Christ. I got to put it on my calendar. They're mocking it. And I'm saying that's exactly what the Bible says they'll do in 2 Peter 3. And they're going to mock it as if God is slack. But, my but God is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering to us, sure not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Can say the thing happened, but we that's why that's why God delays his return. Because he wants he wants to give sinners a chance to repent. He doesn't want them to perish in the flames of hell. And so he mocks it and God still gives them air to breathe. He mocks it and God still lets them to live. He mocks it and, and God wants them to repent. It's to his own detriment. But he mocks it. And someday, if you don't repent, you're going to give an account for that, man. So I don't I want that to happen to you. It's going to happen to you, though. So what if God says jump off a cliff? If I God doesn't say that. that. God doesn't say that. But if he does? He wouldn't. But if there is no if. He wouldn't. Sinners. God is holy. God doesn't call you to kill yourself. That's murder. Murders go to hell. So people God would never tell you to kill yourself. Are murderers who go of themselves. That's right. That's right. Unless they're unsuccessful. There's many who are unsuccessful in doing it, and they get a chance to repent. I have a question, but God has never told But wouldn't that still be attempted murder by your logic? What's that? Wouldn't that still be attempted murder? It sure would, but they have a chance to repent. 
They're still alive. Ah, We've all sinned hundreds of, hundreds of times, thousands of times. So I could try and kill someone, like the Pope, but I wouldn't be a sinner because I did, it didn't. I didn't say you wouldn't be a sinner. I said you have a chance to repent now because you have not died so in I your sins. I would say I'm sorry. I would say to the Pope, no, repentance sorry is, I tried to kill you. No, repentance isn't saying sorry. All good. Repentance is not saying sorry. You're confused. So then what is repentance? Repentance is turning from your sins, completely forsaking them, so where are my changing sins? your heart. Like, like what direction are they? So turn around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, go ahead, keep mocking, man. So your own, I, that doesn't bother me. Asking, it's to your own detriment you mock, mock the gospel. It's your own detriment you mock the gospel. It doesn't bother me. It's not going to hurt me. You're hurting yourself. Is Jesus a dictator? Yeah. Is you a part of this fucking innocent that's okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. So then roundabout is on the point. Just based off of what you said, I want to understand something. Yeah. Help me. I'm going to listen. Sure, okay. If somebody it does not know the word of God, yeah. they do not understand what you know, they tell you in the Bible, they tell you all the things that, like, what is sin, they tell you the things that you shouldn't be doing as a Christian, right? right. The holy life. Sure. So, for a person who does not know what their sin is, does not know the word of God, how do they then repent for something they don't know that they're doing wrong? They have to hear the gospel. And in order to hear the gospel, you have to speak, right? Well, in order to hear the gospel, there's many ways that it can come to pass. They can read the Bible for themselves. They can receive a gospel tract that someone gives them. I will take this because yes. you... The, 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 yeah, they can hear. I'm, I'm good, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm good. So you can get, you can have dreams. Uh, people in Muslim countries, where there's no access to the gospel, they get dreams, visions, angelic visitations, missionaries go to them. But listen, if God, God genuinely wants everyone to be saved, everybody who's ever lived, and God is not, you know constricted to a Christian missionary tell someone the truth, God can get the truth to people if they really want it. And so the issue with someone who's never heard the gospel, who doesn't know what to repent of, is not um, can God get the gospel to them or does God want them to be saved? The issue is do they really want God? See, because all of us were born with a certain amount of light, a certain amount of understanding and knowledge. Okay. One light we all have is called the conscience. That's a fixed mindset. Okay? The Can I ask you? I'm sorry. Can yeah, the, the, the conscience mind? is God's law written upon our heart that we know right from wrong. We feel ashamed when we do wrong. We feel okay when we do right. And then we all have creation. We can look at the creation that testifies to a creator God. And if someone does a very simple thing, very simple knowledge, not very basic, if someone obeys those two knowledges, God will see that and he'll reveal more truth to them because he wants them to be saved. So that's not our situation, obviously, but there probably are people in the world who might be in that situation. I don't know of any personally, but there might be people in, in some countries that don't have access to the gospel. I don't know. And if they don't, God has a way of getting it to them that doesn't, doesn't uh, require another person to do it okay. or a written book. See, my own, the only thing, the question I have, though, is like, I hear what you're saying and everybody has their, you know, their standpoint, their views, right? Yeah. When you come to the whole perspective of, you're, 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 yes, people, you want people to hear the gospel, you want them to repent, well, not you, God. God wants people to repent, hear the gospel. I do too. Stuff, right? I do too. Then it comes to the whole thing of how, are, how is this delivery going to make anybody in this crowd okay. want to hear the gospel? Okay, well, I mean, when it comes to my methodology and my message, okay, I must be biblical primarily, okay? I, I cannot allow the opinions of man or even my own feelings or the feelings of others to sway my, mes my message and my methodology. It comes from the Bible. And if I do it any other way, I'm walking according to my own wisdom or the wisdom of somebody else. See, the wisdom of God is foolishness in the, in the world's sight. And the wisdom of the world is foolishness in God's sight. And God says that the preaching of gospel of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. So the way, the reason why God has set things up the way they are, where He sends preachers to go into the, or, the world and proclaim in public places loudly the whole truth of God, the whole counsel of God, is because at that point in time, only the humble will get saved. Only those who truly humble themselves with childlike faith will be saved. Everyone who's puffed up in pride at all. The Bible says God resists the proud, and He gives grace to the humble. And so God will only give His grace, which is how we get saved, He only give His grace to the humble. So this, this takes, this kind of me message and methodology takes extreme humility, 
for the person giving it and for the person who will choose to receive it. Do you know what a pyramid scheme is? God, that is hilarious. I don't know. It, the old, it, it still just it doesn't translate to I, I was raised in a Baptist church. I was raised off of I was raised off of the belief that you love regardless of the background, sexuality, anything that anybody comes from understand that your truth is your truth so yes i'm raised in a christian church and yes i understand the word of god and gospel but regardless of that i don't you know disrespect nor come to other people with a message of not not even necessarily hatred but straight judgment off the bat is that's why i was roundabout into that whole point of how can you bring this here deliver it this way but then not want to be willing to teach people it's the same way jesus did it same exact way jesus did it when he preached the crowds it's the same exact way he preached so it's not it's not unloving it's not hateful to tell someone the truth now the world likes to redefine words and this world has redefined both love and hate I have not given myself over to their definitions. I believe what the Bible says about the word, about those words. So I'm not going to give over to them because they think that love is accepting them the way they are and, and not being judgmental towards them or not, or, or not or not telling them the truth about hellfire. That's love to them. But and, and then hate is telling them hellfire and telling them about judgment and not accepting them the way they are. That's the way I probably said 99 percent of people out here tonight today. That's the way to define love and hate. I don't submit myself to that. Doesn't matter how hard they push it, how angry they are at me, I'm not submitting myself to those definitions. But not based upon God's word. And God is the definer of those words, because God is love. Therefore, he defines what love is. Okay. Well, thank you for answering my question. You're welcome. Where's your question, Lynn? Um, I think we're earlier talking yes. about my loss yes. and stuff. I was wondering, it's gonna be in YouTube, like, like Eventually. and stuff. Is there a way you can like not have me face in it, or is that just not possible? I can try my best. Okay. I'm not a videographer. Yeah, fair enough. I'm not a video editor. I'm not a very good video editor. I'll try my best. Yeah, well, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Back, Oscar. 
This way, Jesus. You know, I'd say Adam and Eve. You say Adam and Eve, okay? Adam, it, depending on what part of the story you believe, in, in terms of like if it's the snake tempted Eve, if you believe that part of it, if you believe from the Eastern Orthodox point of view that the sin was based on Adam uh, making a choice to go against God to take to take it an apple from the. We don't know if it's an apple, right. but yeah. But yeah, a fruit of some kind, right? Um, they were sinners. Mm -hmm. They made a choice. That's right. Right? Yep. I didn't make a choice. Who made the choice for you then? I didn't I didn't pick it. I mean you didn't pick it. I, I fought it for twenty five years. Well then you, you pick it then. Stop fighting. That's I a have, choice. I have stopped fighting. That's a choice. Which you made, no one else made it for you. But 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 Adam and Eve are both forgiven for their sins, right? Um, well the Bible doesn't actually say that, but really? I, I would I would assume that they probably repented, but right. you can only be forgiven if you repent. Right. If you don't repent, you can't be forgiven. Right? Yeah. Can I ask you? I'm, well, I'm talking to him right now. Yeah. So you have to No, no, no I'm, I'll, I'll bow out. I've already gotten my food. Oh, I just wanted to continue our conversation. Well, if he, he wants he wants to talk, he can wait a second. That's all I'm saying. You know, just barge the conversation is how you guys talk. So I, yeah, I'm done. Okay. So, I see... Why are the Muslims on Why are the Muslims on it? Uh, because they haven't trusted in Jesus Christ for salvation and mercy right. and forgiveness. Right. Muslims believe they have their own religion. So what does that mean? They're wrong. But who are you to say that they're wrong? I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. But they don't believe it. Doesn't matter. So what? So what makes your religion more authentic than what you say Muslims, Buddhists? It's the truth. Okay. And they can say the same thing about their religion to you. They'd be they'd be lying though. They'd be wrong. But again, what makes yours more authentic than theirs? It's the truth. Right, but what? I need more. You need even more. Yeah, you just say I don't the have truth. to give you more. It's the truth. But what makes it the truth? Jesus Christ said, "I am the truth." Right. To so your religion. But no. Not everyone so Jesus believes. Christ said. But not everyone. Ooh. Lack of belief in something does not make it untrue. It Lack of right. belief in God doesn't make him go away. So Lack of belief saying. in hell doesn't make him go away. Who are you to say that a different religion is wrong? I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Right, in your religion. That's right. And my religion is the truth. And, right. And Jesus Christ said all of those are false. In the Bible. Right. right. But not everyone reads the Bible, right? Well, they should. They should obey it, too, and believe it. But again. Christianity is not the only religion. false. Okay. Christianity is true. So why do you think it's false? So what, what, what makes it's not based upon the Bible. And what makes the Bible so true? But it, it's God's so word. Correct? What if Jesus is the way if they have Jesus? They don't have Jesus. Well, again, what's, what makes your Bible so correct? What makes it more true? It's, it's the word of God. I mean, it's the word of God. Jesus, I mean, right. Jesus well, you got to give more. you got to give more. No, saying, I don't have to give more. You can't just say it's the word of God if you believe it. You gotta be, if you're trying to turn... No. You, you, can start, you don't have to believe it if you don't want no. to, but I'm saying what the truth no, is. Saying, but if you, you want to kind of do, if you don't, you burn it for a second. No, if, listen, no, I'm saying it's free will. So I'm if saying, you want to convince you become a Christian, you I'm not trying to convince you. Then what are you doing here? Preaching the word of God. So if you have Jesus, then you have life. Nope. It doesn't matter if you're murderer. Right, Declaring the word of God is the same thing as trying to convince you of anything. But that doesn't mean. Yeah. Declaring the truth does not mean I'm trying to convince you of anything. So then why are you wasting your time here? To declare the truth of God. Just why is that so important to you? Because God commands me to do it and I love Him. So if someone else came around, let's say a mother came and preached about the Quran? Religion, yeah. I tell them they're wrong. I contend with them. I tell them the Bible. Again, you have no. Like, you just keep saying it's the truth. But I, it is true. Oh, it's a circular argument. No, well, like, no, 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 no other religion has had their God step down in human form to suffer, like, like to face the most, the worst suffering a human can possibly endure, and um, just for us to still be sinners. Yeah, and have grace through humility. You know, like no other religion has. That Can I ask you a like clarification back. question? Mm -hmm. So I've asked all of them, and I've got different answers from every single one of them. I know you're with them, but I, I'm not. I'm not going to assume that you have the exact same thing. 
Unless you say you are. Would you say you have the exact same beliefs as these people? Uh, it depends on what it is, I guess. Okay, um, so my question is, um, I'm sure you've heard this before, but Pakistan, India, any country where um, there's a lot of people who are brought up in that country, and uh, let's say there's a 20-year-old Indian kid, He's never heard of Christianity. He's never heard of the Christian God. He doesn't know that exists. He doesn't have a choice. He doesn't have a. He doesn't even get a shot of accepting your Christ. What happens to him after he dies? He goes to hell. Yeah, dude. Is that right. more? Like, I, to you? Well, the thing is that is I what? have a couple. Like, personally, well, hold on, hold on a second. I'm, I'm talking to him right now. Is that personally moral? To you? Of course, it's moral. That's personally moral to you. Of course, it is. He didn't get a choice. No, he got a choice. How? Oh. He had a choice to sin or not to sin. But he didn't know that. Dude. No, that's not true. See, see, what you want to understand is the Bible teaches he had two lights. Before, but he doesn't know. Do you want to listen? Bible. Do you want to listen? It doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter if they know the Bible or not. Yes, it does. No, it does not. He doesn't know your religion. Do you want to listen? The Bible. I'm answering. You don't let me get a chance to answer your question. Okay. I'm gonna walk away here in a second. I don't care. So the Bible teaches that everybody has two lights. The Bible teaches that everybody has two lights. Conscience. Everyone is born with a conscience. Right. The law of God is written upon their hearts. Their conscience bears witness of this. This is outside of the Word of God. They didn't read any now, you're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. They don't have to read the text to understand this. This is the facts. Whether they read this text or not, they have a conscience given it to them by God. The law of God is written upon their heart, testifies them what the law of God says. Number two, the second light they have is creation. They can look around and understand there's a creator God, a being that's intelligent and greater than them that created everything they see. Now, if they submit to those two lights, creation and conscience, and seek to follow the God they understand by those two lights, God will then see that because he loves them and he wants them to be saved, and he'll reveal more truth to them so they can come to a full knowledge of the truth in Jesus Christ. So, so the problem is not whether someone has heard the word of God or not. The problem is they haven't obeyed the lights that God has given them. And if they will obey those lights, God will give them more because he cares for them. I still don't I think you're like, understanding. I understood it perfectly. Why is I started perfectly. You don't understand I mean, what I'm asking. No, I, I totally get your answer. So I've heard that from one of them. Um, like, you know, they're not going to hell, right? You might want to check with the no. others. They said something totally different. Um, but I just, I still don't understand what you're saying about how, like, if he, you talked about the two lights and how um, creationism is, pr is proof of the creator, right? I just don't understand, like, if they're not even, like, open, they've not even, like, heard anything about that. I don't understand. It's not about hearing it. It's not about hearing it. So you, you, you keep it stuck on it. It's not about hearing anything. These are these are facts. Sir, I have a question. Your facts. No, they're God's facts. Is it a fact-based religion or is it a belief? Is it a faith-based religion? Fact. Absolute fact truth. That's right. Absolute truth. I'm going to shake your hand and go then because we just find really just good, okay? It is not a fact-based religion. It is. It's absolute truth. So Whether you believe it or not. I have a question. Whether you believe it or not. I have a... Whether you believe it or not, it's truth. That's a false dichotomy. It's called a false dichotomy. Are you going to answer questions or are you? No. But, all right, so I have a hard thing to question for you. Are you going to listen for the answer? Yeah. Okay. Do babies go to hell? No, absolutely not. No. Why do they not go to hell? They're not sinners. Because they're not sinners. But what if but, they kill themselves in a miscarriage? Look, he's saying everyone gets pulled into the truth and you have to make that decision to follow it. Like that, that's what God gives us, individuality and free will. So we have the choice to choose whether or not to follow this, these signs that he gives us. All right. Do pets go to hell? What'd you say? Do pets, like pets, like dogs? Pets are cats? not moral creatures. That's Only humans are moral creatures. So humans are made in God's image. They just die. They just die. Who, who is hell waiting for? Like, if I go to hell, did, does the doors of hell close because it's waiting for me? Oh, it's waiting for sinners! Oh, it's, oh my God. But sinners you're you're so right? smart. I mean, I don't know how to respond to that. You're just so intelligent. You're so above me. I mean, I am smarter than you. Sorry, man. Hell is made. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just thank too dumb you. to respond thank to your, you, your witty, you. the witty things you say. So many compliments. Sorry, thank you so much. You. Have you ever, this is a legitimate question by the way, have you ever kissed another man? Absolutely not. And how do you know that you're not gay if you've never tried it? Have you ever uh, been run over by a car? I'm sorry? You ever been run over by a car before? Yeah. Have you ever had your head smashed in? Yeah. No, you haven't. Your head's still right there. Head smashed stopped. in. Have you had your arm cut off? Why don't you try it? You might like it. I might like it. Just go cut your arm off. Okay. Then I will. See how foolish that line of thinking is? That's also a line of thinking is very foolish. 
That one I think sense. is very foolish because I haven't tried it. That means I won't. I would well, like it. Someone is a pleasurable event and getting my head smashed oh. in. So, so, so whether, whether, well, how do you know it's pleasurable or not? You've never had it done. Well, there are people who, if we cut out the sinning, okay. Well, well, people who have well what, people whether, people whether kissing another have. man and being a sodomite is pleasurable or not, I will never do it because God tells me not to. What's a sodomite? Homosexual man. But what is sodomy specifically? It's a man having sex with a man. It's a citizen of the nation. You know what it is. I'm not going to even bother talking about it. Okay, when, during gay intercourse, does it become a sin? Like, immediately? Is it just kissing It's not gay. It's not sin. Actually, it, ha it becomes sin before that. The sin of lust. It's a sin of lust. It's a sin of lust. Just preaching the word of God. There are better things to worry about. Like men kissing men. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, I I didn't want to like say what school I was going to, but um, not to say that you would do anything. Yeah. But um, um I, I don't know if you read it or not, or, not, or if you're like busy. Or something. I get lots of emails, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry if I didn't respond to it. Oh I no, just, it's fine. It, it was like. Uh, I only have so much time. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. But um, it's really detailed. I I, I just had a few questions about like, uh, self defense and like marriage and stuff like that. Okay, so self defense is not biblical. It's not Christian. It's not Christian. No, turn your cheek is Christian. Loving your enemies, praying for your enemies, laying down your life for your enemies, preaching the truth to your enemies, and of course, when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to um, defense, the most powerful defense is praying, right. preaching. And you can flee sometimes too. But I'll tell you to flee sometimes, persecution. So that, that's the sort of the spirit. People oftentimes when they get involved in self-defense, they think it's for some reason that guns, knives, and fists are more powerful than the word of God. It's the sort of the spirit. And so the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty for the tearing down of strongholds. And so, I mean, obviously the other reason thing is that if someone's trying to kill me, they're a sinner. If I kill them while they're trying to kill me, sending them to hell. And what happens if I fail to kill them, they kill me instead. Now I go to hell. So I murder in my heart towards them. You know, so I don't ever want to do that. I, I want to lay down my life for my enemies. You know, so if they attack me, I'm not attacking back. And I'll trust in God to protect me. Because God can stop anyone he wants from doing anything they want to me. They, they can't touch me unless he lets it. And if he allows it, then I, I want to receive it from him. No matter how hard it is, I want to receive that and allow it to change me and sanctify me and bring things out of me and put things in me to become more like Christ. Because, you know, he was perfected through suffering. And if he is my, he is my Lord and I'm his servant, he's my teacher and I'm his, his student, then I to become like him, I have to go through what he went through and do what he did and say what he said. Yeah. So that's my position on that. So what was your question on marriage, though? Um, well, yeah, I heard um, a lot of, well, I've researched a lot of sources. They say, like, actual wedding ceremonies, they can be, like, sort of pagan and it's not really required. Like, all that's required. I think, I'm not sure if it's basically um, in the Old Testament where, like, the guy has to ask permission of the uh, uh, woman's father or something like that, uh, along the lines of that, that. That's all that's basically needed. Well, I'm no, sure I, like, I wouldn't say that. I mean... I think people, I, I've run to people who said it before, you know what they're doing? They want to go fornicate. Okay. And I've seen people do that, they go fornicate and then they break up with them, but they don't go to divorce, don't get divorced, right. don't get a certificate of divorce like they did in the Old Testament. They say go on to the next person, do the same thing and fornicate with them. Okay. So it's, 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 a, it's a looking for sexual immorality without the commitment. Right. That's what I've noticed in the past. So when you see in the scripture that 
marriage is a picture of Jesus and his bride. It's a picture of Jesus and the church. And when the wedding day happens, the wedding of Christ, Revelation talks about this, literally, Jesus is in the clouds, right, awaiting us, waiting for us to be resurrected. And, and the Father resurrects us to him, like walking down an aisle, a father walking their daughter down an aisle to the groom. And this is, thus we shall always be at the Lord. You know, so, so there, there is ceremony involved in it. And I think, I think to steal that away from the father of the bride, to steal that picture away from her. I mean, if you're a Christian, personally, I want to be, if I'm going to get married, I want to, I am married, but if I was going to get married, I would want the ceremony to be God glorifying. And I want everybody who's there to hear the gospel. It's a picture of the gospel, what we're seeing going on there in the wedding. So people who do that, man, I mean, listen, they say it's pagan, right? Well, did they use the word Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday? Those are all pagan. There's all kinds of paganism in our society. It doesn't mean I'm a pagan. Right, yeah. I mean, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ in the midst of all those things. Right. So, I'm not saying it's true. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just okay. playing kind of devil's advocate, so to speak, with someone who would say those things. And so that, that's, that's what I hear from them. And that's what I was, does that make sense to you? Yeah. That's yeah. what I would say to you. And, um, also, uh, I'm trying to read the Bible like front to back. Yeah. Um, I'm about to be done with First Kings, but okay. um, what would you recommend? Like, I know a lot of Christians, we like to, I know we, we're supposed to know the whole Bible and it's a yeah. but um, should I keep, would you personally suggest that I keep reading until I hit the New Testament and continue on or just okay. skip to the New Testament? I'll tell you what I do. Yeah. Okay, so I read through the Old Testament at least once a year. No, it's New Testament about three times a year. Okay. And so I'm reading through the New Testament while I'm reading through the Old Testament. Oh, okay. So I'll read through the Old Testament and I'm reading through the New Testament. So I'll get through the New Testament three times probably before I get through the Old Testament once. Oh, okay. That, that way, because the Old Testament is important. It right, is important. Yeah. Don't, let's not dismiss it. I mean, I know there's genealogy in there that kind of difficult to get through sometimes, but, but it's important for us as Christians to understand the Old Testament, especially when it comes to prophecy. Oh, the old the end time stuff, you have to read Jeremiah, you have to read Isaiah, you have to read Ezekiel, you have to read Zechariah and Daniel. They're so important. But when it comes to understanding the doctrine we believe, the New Testament takes preeminence. You know, I understand the Old Testament from the New Testament, you know, in light of it. Because it's the, it's the clearest and newest revelation we have is the New Testament, the New Covenant. And so I'm always going to read that more. I've read the New Testament probably 100 times in my life, the Old Testament probably 30 times. Okay, so that that's my pattern. I think I, it's been profitable for me. I think because I want to I want to understand biblical doctrine and teachings. And I'll be able to share with others. Right. At the same time, I highly understand Old Testament too. Yeah, like I want to I want to understand it to a T. So I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering like how should I just really go about it? Just yeah. pay more attention to the new. Yeah, I, I would I would I would do the new at least twice as much as the old. Okay. That's what I would do and, and read it together. Right. Okay. And if there's I mean there's reading plans out there that will give you that kind of option. A lot of reading plans will have you read an Old Testament chapters, New Testament chapters, and read a Psalm or a Proverb. That's a good plan. Right. That's good, because Psalms and Proverbs have lots of, lots of rich stuff in it. Right. You know? What's your name, by the way? Christian. Christian Kerrigan. Nice to meet you. You too, man. I watched a lot of your uh, videos on Revelation and stuff. I, okay. I can't wait to get to that book. But I understand, like you were saying earlier, like, I have to read, I have to understand a lot about the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. That's why I felt like it was kind of better to read it from beginning to end rather yeah. than just skip to the New Testament. Then I can't really understand because I got to go back. Yeah. So that's really why I was trying to like, Amen. just hear from someone who actually did it. Amen. Praise God. I just wanted to say, I like what you're doing. Uh, you know, the risk going out here. I'm glad you're doing it. God bless you. I hope you have a safe day. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your encouragement. Appreciate it. Bless you, man. I think we've I've answered this question for you several times today already. No, I have not asked that question. Okay. Are you avoiding the question? What did you just say? Are you answering the question? But what is what did you just say? Um, you assume that you've seen me multiple times today. Yeah. 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 Yeah
do I look like other black people in this country? So you're a racist, okay. I'm a racist? Yeah. I'm a racist. Yeah, I'll step away. Are you going to answer the Muslim question though? It's okay. Yeah, well, this is a Muslim right here. Is this one? I don't know. Well, guys, well, 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 well,
Girls, kids, go! You're the only one not talking. I mean, I mean, I mean, you even brought out Ed Sheeran, so I mean, that's nice. If being gay is a sin, why is your G spotting you like Oh, fact. I'm just wondering if like anatomically, your G spot is in your ass. That is true. Why? So theoretically, if you got pegged, you would like it. Surrounded by people who are oppressed, man. Look at it. Just look at all the oppressed people. Sticking my sign with the pride flags too, I had to peel them off. Man, I gotta bring a chisel next time.
Says so. Oh, what, can you tell me the exact? Yeah, I want to hear the Tell words. me the exact words. First Corinthians want, 6, 9 through 10. Can, can you, you tell recite me? it? Can yeah, I can recite it. Please do. If you do not know, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites will inherit the kingdom of God. It, it I don't clearly says homosexual. homosexual. Yep. I don't remember that word. That's and sodomites. From the Bible, I have so. What was it? First Corinthians what? 6, 9 through 10. And it specifically says in that homosexual. Yes. Do you know how many times the Bible has been translated in different languages? This comes straight from the Greek. Into the English. Straight from the Greek. Try it. Do you have any other reasoning on why homosexuals are going to hell? That's all I need. That's all you need. Oh, no. God the verse so. has been translated over oh, No, it's been translated straight from the Greek to the English. To straight from the Greek to the English. Greek? Sorry. Straight from the Greek to the English. Straight. So, my question is, sorry, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. I thought he was ready. I don't care. We just got to be ready. Where are we doing this? It doesn't say homosexual. It homosexual does. wasn't a word back then. It was. You're sure? Yeah. Malakoi. Malakoi is homosexual. Arsenokotais is sodomite. Okay, notice how you just said two different words. Notice how I just said those words weren't there. So which word was in the Bible? I told you. H-O-M-O-S-E-U-A-L? You didn't listen to what I said. I don't think you understand. The word in Greek 
translated into homosexual in English, is malakoi. The word in Greek translated into English as sodomite is arsenokotis. Okay, so where did... Um, the Bible is not originally written in English, so of course the word homosexual is not going to be in there. But the Greek word for homosexual is there, and the Greek word for sodomite is there. So if that wasn't the original word, and it had to be translated... What so man, you obviously want to be a sodomite. You're going to hell, man. Just warning you. I can tell you it's not worth it. must be tired walking past that. It's not worth it. At the other campus? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, same thing? Yeah. Maybe 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 a little bit less bad. Might be a little bit worse, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's hurting pretty bad. We should probably call it a day. Uh, no, you guys can keep going. I might just sit down somewhere for a minute. Unless you guys are done. I mean, I don't know what time it is. I don't know what time it is. It's 3 o'clock, I guess. No, Dick. No balls. I think it's at 4 o'clock. Let's go talk to them. Okay, see how they feel. Yeah. Thank you for your service. <laughs> you, you didn't take my advice before. Thanks, God. I just feel like it would be a better. Also, why are you saying that? Hey, bro. The Bible says. You want to wrap it up? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, the Bible says. How's he doing? He's ready. <laughs> ready to go? And he's not doing anything. Be black. He's being like, really. And be gay. Woo! Woo! Hey bro. hey bro, you ready to wrap it up? Yes, sir. Okay. You ready? Yeah. You let Elijah know? I don't know where he is. Oh, there he is. Okay. We're going to wrap it up. Huh? That's theirs. I need one. Yeah, they'll give you one. Yeah, go ahead, bro. You can have one. Sorry, are you all asking questions now? Oh, my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Follow oh, Jesus, Scott. Oh, they're in a tray. Yeah, what happened with my neighbor? My neighbor, yeah. How do you feel about like vaccinations and that kind of stuff? Don't get it. Because I got kicked out of my house and so I'm not getting vaccinated by my dad. So I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Don't do it though. Your health, your health is important. Your health is important. Yeah. And like, it's so new, you know. I don't know what people think about it and people are pushing it. The government is pushing it. Yes. Yeah. Very dangerous. Yeah. What's your name? Nadia. Nadia. I'm going to pray for you tonight, Nadia. Thank you. I bless you, Nadia. Sir, can I ask you a question? No, I'm, I'm done answering questions, but I'm leaving. You were done answering questions about 40 minutes ago. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Because they're all mockers and scoffers, that's why. We're not mockers, I'm genuinely asking. No, you're not genuine. You rightly discerned that one, brother. Wow. Hey, thanks for warning me about that guy earlier. Yeah. I, as soon as you said that, the conversation went completely hostile. He he let it out like what he was holding in. That's right, man. He was trying to be cordial, but I could tell something was. He was off. sneaking up on us. As soon as you said that, bro, it all came out. Yeah, he was sneaking up on us. Give me all in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me all in my lamp, I pray. Give me all in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the judgment day. It makes me sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Make me a fisher of men, keep me fishing. Make me a fisher of men, I pray. Make me a fisher of men, keep me fishing.
Keep me fishing till the judgment day. It makes me sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Give me grace to endure, to endure. Oh, give me grace to endure, I pray. Give me grace to endure, to endure, to endure until the judgment day. It makes me sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Keep me seeking you, Yahweh. Keep me seeking. Keep me seeking you, Yahweh. I pray. Keep me seeking you, Yahweh. Keep me seeking. Keep me seeking till the judgment day. It makes me sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the 